All right, welcome to the Sebe cast number five with Adicon. Adicon, would you introduce yourself? Hey guys, very nice to be here. Um, I'm Atty, in short, I guess. And, my, well, mostly I just PVM a lot, really. Uh, I'm pretty much, I think, the first big PVMer, I guess I would say, to be on the Sebe cast. Yeah, um, I mean, if you don't not, include not... Valor. <laughs> <laughs> Well, pet hunting and PVMing, that's right? True, it's, that's it's true. Sort of, it's a little bit sort different. of a small distinction. Uh, but the other guys are all great at what they do. But I'm sort of, I'm sort of more of just a, a click boss and ignore the side of skilling. And I like going for pets, but it's not really my thing. Uh, so mostly all I do is just sort of cool challenges, some fun stream stuff. Um, again, a couple of pets, things, a couple of skillings. I am maxed for what it's worth, but. I was going to say, really I was like, not a skiller, but you're definitely Max. Max has yeah, Max right. kind of become just like a PVM thing at this point. Like, It's almost a necessity, right, <laughs> yeah. I feel. Um, to, to draw from a really obvious example to go for is like the Inferno, right? People who are running like 80 agility or less these days for speedruns are bringing two stems. It's a whole inventory slot. Yep. And you have a limited amount, right? So that's a, that's a nice example of just even agility beyond 80 being relevant. Um, I currently have two accounts that I play my main, which is Atty, just RSN, Atty, double A-T-Y. That account's maxed, and my old Zarpus, very cool name. Uh, that account's got 73 agility, believe it or not. And I have to run two Sams. I just can't do it. Yeah, that's so, obnoxious. It's just one of those things. So, <clears throat> let me think back to a time where I first met Addy. Let's, I'm trying to think. What well, was that like? My goodness. I mean, I know that was early 2019, but I'm not sure what month. I know. Um, so when did you start streaming? That's what I'm curious of. So I think I started playing, like replaying old school about three years ago now. Must have been around three, just over three years. And I started streaming about six to eight months, I think, in. So once I had an account that was ready to do sort of mid to high level bossing raids wise kind of thing, like raids one at least. And also just general, like, moving towards the end of the Slayer grind, I guess, because that was just my thing back then. Um, so probably about, what, two and a half? Well, probably, it, might, it must be, like, a bit over two years. So probably, like, two, just end of, like, 2018 Two years, two years, three months. Right, something, okay. something like that. Okay, so sure first thing I remember of your stream is, obviously, you're doing solo raids. <clears throat> of course. And I had just started streaming because I found you because when I first started streaming, I loved going into the old school directory and Twitch and just looking for new streamers. And you were one that like just instantly popped out. I was like, okay, I'm like let's, you know, this guy actually knows what he's That's... he's not he's not just like some noob, you know, just casually, you know, messing around. Like this guy knows what he's doing. And uh, a... first thing I remember though is that you had the best clicks I had ever seen of any PVMer ever. Like, just flawless clicks, and I was so jealous. And at the time, I had this really crappy mouse I was using, and it just, like, oh, I remember man. practicing for days. I mean, d okay, definitely a mouse helps, but, like, it still is just natural just being able yeah. to just be precise with your the, clicks. And that's this is definitely something we can get into big time. I'm, I'm a big fan of talking about mice and uh, settings and, it, like, be it resolution on screen or all that good stuff for how, how it affects clicks. So I'm curious, um, um, what mm -hmm. do you think, okay, so I'm still pretty newbie at like, you know, what I'm, you're, for sure you're more like into the precision and mice and resolution and stuff, but I, I realized probably six months ago how big of a deal refresh rate makes on like mouse precision. Is that true? Do you, th do you agree with that? Ooh, so what, the uh, DPI? Um, no, 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 like the refresh or rate you of your the... monitor. Oh, like, actually monitor? Yeah. So RuneScape runs at, what, 50 frames per second capped? Yeah. Can't go higher no matter what you do. Uh, realistically, the answer is no for RuneScape. As soon as you hit 60, which I think all monitors generally do these days, you should be fine. Not to say there's not an edge from going to... Because I, I run 144 currently on my main, and I think most, most people these days try to get a 120+, plus monitor-wise. It's definitely a difference, but it's more of like the quality. The, I don't think it affects the gameplay. It's sort of the quality in terms of how you feel and how and how you look at it and how it is sort of. So I don't know what it, it's, I. It, it's less towards the idea of it'll improve your clicks and more towards this just feels good. 
So what I noticed was, okay, so my brother had like a 4K monitor that he wasn't using anymore. And he was like, hey, you want to mm-hmm. use this? So I brought it down here and it was kind of a cheaper one. It was only a 60 hertz monitor. And so I brought it down here and my monitors were 75. And I kid you not, I had like no precision whatsoever. Just just simply <laughs> reducing from a 75 to a 60 because your ma- like the actual cursor just doesn't it's like not fluid enough like it it almost feels like it's lagging like the entire time and so i realized it's, it's like it's like it has that trail in comparison yeah. to being one object that that's one really obvious thing you notice when you make the switch for sure um and i've never know, played I, I, higher sure than a 75 hertz so i'm kind of curious what a 144 would really do i feel like that would massively improve my uh precision but I, again, it, I, sure. I imagine i imagine it would help a, a great deal now i think about it i've never played on anything less than 144 because when i started three years ago i had this monitor i would so honestly kind of i would like almost want you to try it because it's painful <laughs> like it's I, actually I, painful I, I might play an hour or two and just set it to 60 and see what it's like oh yeah you could just set it to 60 true he said 60 yeah but i uh, think these days i've got a bit of the muscle memory though it's not gonna it's going to throw me off for a, a little while, but it won't be sort of the big... That's true, because it still is the same DPI. It's just... Yeah. You're not going to see it visually the same. Okay, so but, yeah, um, that's pretty much the first time... First time I met you uh, was beginning of 2019, and you were just raids, Andy. You know, just raids, 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 raids. And um, yeah. I was so, raids as well, I mean, to be honest. I, re- I remember the first time I met you i was i jump in i'm like this guy's actually doing solo raids and those really soon because that was of course what i was into at the time um that's kind of all i built my stream up as, on as well was like solo cms I, I figured like if i was going to stream something i wanted it to be something i could grind long term for like a series of goals and obviously dust was a you know roughly 400 rate goal that would last a fair amount of time I figured solo raids were the most fun thing I could do at the time. Good money as well. <laughs> no, it didn't turn out to be. And I've, I've got one of the worst solo GP and hours in all of existence. But regardless, it seemed like a cool goal to go for. And I was like, heck, anyone can stream. Just press the go live button. Yeah, literally. And I, and I, feel, like, I feel like to some degree it's a bit of a misconception. Where I, I, know it's, I know it's not true for like the really big guys. But these days even, if, it's like, if I want to go live, I can just press the button. I don't have to think about it. I just press the button. Yep. And everyone's always like, oh, no, there's, there's way more that goes into streaming. you got to prepare. Like, no, just press the button. Go live. But that's kind of what it felt like anyway. And it was just sort of, hey, come up every day, just, you know, four or five hours. That's four or five solar CMs. Worked out perfectly. Yeah. But it was interesting because I built my sort of early stream on just solar CM, like mindless grinding. Yeah. Um, that's perfect, honestly. And it was, it was enjoyable. So. I always, I also remember <clears throat> on your stream. So one of the things I look for in like streams, like new streamers that I'm like looking for, I always look for like how clean their stream looks. I know that's kind of, that's probably not that big of a deal to most people, but to me, I'm like a little bit OCD, I'd say like just, just a little bit. And I remember your stream just looked super fucking clean. Just like, okay. Like this guy actually cares you might just say you know just press the live button go live but he actually shows a little bit of care in his stream and so that went a long way as well I, it makes me wonder if that was the point in time where i had um do you remember those like if i had the vines up on the inventory yep so that that, that so I, I got those really early on actually which was which was a great move um completely unintentional on my part but I had, a, I had a friend who was good into graphic design. I was like, hey, can we just sit down for like three days and run through this? And it did take like three days of sitting there just figuring out little details and things. Yeah, and to this day, I clean. use that and I just absolutely love it. Because it's not one of those invasive sort of overlays. It's not like just in your face. It's just It just blends in, which is really nice. So before but, you um, started streaming, I remember looking at your... Er, okay, when you first started streaming, I should <laughs> rephrase that. I, I remember reading your bio and I can't even remember what it exactly said, but it was something about that you were like a past esports organizer or something like that. I can't even remember because yeah. I think you changed it. But so this, can you this go is, into that? This is a crazy story in terms of how like how it was just man. Okay, so Ooh, let's see. I'm gonna skip I'm gonna skip like the really big detailed stuff. But in short, um for a period of time I was playing Rocket League popular car boost jump game yep soccer 2v2 uh sorry 3v3 general great esport game and still is to this day 
and I had made some friends in a trading scene for it. So you could trade skins for cars and the boosts and things. And within there was a... Well, still is, I think, the biggest trading server for the game, but it's also expanded to some other stuff these days, Trade Central. Um, I'll send you the link in Discord if you want to just have a quick... Yeah. This thing. And I had offered, hey, I've um, I've been involved in some smaller discords, I'm interested in just helping out, and wanted to clean up their stuff because it was sort of, it was one of those places, in fact, it's, this is, this is a little known fact, and this is another thing that I'm doing now, is like, for We Do Raids, which is the biggest raiding server for old school, We Do Raids is actually like an almost direct copy of Trade Central, and almost no one knows this because it's something that I just sort of did in the background when I was sorting out both discords. But they have some extreme similarities between them in terms of how we started to organize. And essentially, after I did management stuff for TC to make it all come up and running and, you know, look all nice and all that, um, I had been talking with the owner, who had also happened to be an OG Bitcoiner and had an esports team. And it was like, hey, want to do some stuff for the team as well. So I took on a manager position for uh, Mocket Esports, which at the time had one of the better top tier Rocket League teams. So I'd sort of made the entry via just helping in a nice Discord server. Seems good. Into into some sort of manager position for for esports or specifically Rocket League, because they were just purely Rocket League at the time. Um and then I took some time to sort of push market in the direction of other games. So we started H1Z1, we started PUBG, we started Halo, started Rainbow Six, um, I think even Fortnite and COD at some point. So I started, I started doing all that sort of stuff as well. Um, incidentally, that's also where my contact for the designer came for stream. So it's, you know, it's helped in quite a few ways, especially contact wise, but a lot of experience and a lot of traveling as well. Cause of course I got to go to all the events as part of sort of the overall manager for the teams and stuff. Just, I don't know. I, I can go into that for a really yeah. long time, but <laughs> no, that's cool. But uh, it's sort of the whole package experience as well with just a bit of everything, whether it be team building, management, Discord stuff, uh, travel arrangements, just just you know everything. So you said you got like back into uh, OSRS in 2018, I think. Yeah. Um, did, so, so did you play like before that, like years ago as a kid? I played very, very, very long time ago, and my my extent of what I was doing at that point was just clicking on goblins, clicking on minotaurs, and I distinctly remember killing minotaurs in the stronghold of security for iron arrow drops. Ten at a time. Selling that in the G. That was my money maker. That was it. <laughs> and to, you know what's really annoying is these days, they don't have iron arrows on the drop table. They remove them. Really? Yeah. And I only realized this like two weeks ago as I was tutorial skipping, and it was just like, hey, man, they, they definitely <laughs> used to have iron arrows. I, I did this for hours on end. Like, that's... I kind of miss that these days. That's the fun of the game as well. That's you back when our, sort of... our frontal lobes weren't fully developed. <laughs> right. Like you just couldn't, like, I... couldn't realize like this is very, very inefficient. I see monster. I click XP go up. <laughs> iron arrow collect. I had a 100k stack at one point. That's a lot. That's a lot of iron arrows for 10 at a time. Okay. So when you were a kid, did you uh, understand? Because I've heard a lot of people that didn't understand what attack, strength, and defense meant. I would just train two. purely attack. <laughs> I was hitting like ones. Like, I think this is something that happens to everyone. But you look up your old account, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's it's RS three now. And you, so, I, like, I don't know. I start I start old school. I I try to log into old school. I'm like, what's going on? I, I don't have an account. Do you do the thing where you go like, oh, okay, it's an RS three now. I'll just log in and play RS three. You look at your stats and you just quit the game. <laughs> you just like, okay, I'll make a new account then. <laughs> Because you realize you're really not that far along. Yeah, you, no, might, you, you might really have spent that. you might have spent two years playing, but you didn't play. You just sort of trundled and you know. Yep. Had, but it was fun. That was the point. Um, you got some good memories, and I think I'd rather preserve those and start a new account anyway. Yeah, for sure. But, Do you feel like nostalgia, like, is the reason most of us play? I'm actually curious on this because I've heard I, that argument, but like. Yeah, it has to be a leading factor, right? It yeah, has yeah. to be a leading factor to get into it in the first place. Yeah. And then, you know, you give it six months and you're hooked. It's not really about the nostalgia once you're sort of enjoying the game. But in terms of getting back into it, yeah. And I think even more even more so than that, it's something that the management for the advertisement team understands very well because almost every post you see on almost any platform is like, 
it's re it's it's like it's not experience the game it's like re-experience the, the nostalgia they actually use those like terms right yep so so they definitely understand that it's a big factor in bringing people back um and not not that i really understood like how big the game was back in the day but it, it's a really big game um or at least was considered to be one of the biggest at the time i, I guess it's still the biggest mmorpg i suppose Although, you know, I mean, they, they give all the figures about there's like 20 million accounts. Yeah, you know, I'm sure 19 million of them are bot accounts, but <laughs> yeah, you know, there's still a million accounts, right? So, so, yeah, like when they say the biggest MMO, is that like, because I know they, they add the words like the biggest free to play MMO in the world. Oh, really? Yeah, like so it's I'm not... pretty sure they even like mentioned that. So I'm curious because I'm pretty sure World of Warcraft's a lot bigger, right? Like, I, I would I would have thought so, yeah. But, uh, Especially with concurrent player base nowadays, it has to be that free to play like term in there that just I don't know makes it the biggest. I, I think. I've always I've always thought it's just bots pushing up the numbers though. I mean that's probably still a big factor to it. <laughs> to be fair though, to their to their credit, either way they're either the, they're either the biggest or the second biggest. I imagine yeah. I, I find it hard to think there's much that's in third, fourth, fifth place. So they're not they're not entirely wrong um or wrong at all really yeah no it's massive and it's crazy so, that it's growing like the game is literally growing which is it's especially this year yeah. one of the few things that is positive for the game is player base it's been great uh trailblazers are what hit like 175k i want to say concurrent something at one like point. that insane and this is this you know in part to lockdown but of course in part to just how good the content was um that's really, really crazy to think about. Is that many people playing? And again, you know, what, thirty thousand bots. It, it doesn't matter. The point is, you have a majority player base that's actually growing and, and consistent, which is really cool to see. And I and I, I think if you look at the numbers right now, as 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 opposed to pre Trailblazer, it's still higher. Yeah. Um, even though there's almost no one really playing Tra Trailblazer, everyone's either burnt or they're done with their thing. For sure. Minus minus Tryhard Dragon, but you know. <laughs> so, did you play any Trailblazer? I did play Trailblazer, and oh man, this is a rough this is a rough one because I had I had one goal that I that I ended up settling on. I, I sort of started thinking I'm not really gonna play, and even even a week before it started, um, Mod Husky was like, "Hey, you're gonna be playing uh, Trailblazer in stream." I'm just like just thinking about it because you know he'd spent time developing. He was just there, and I was like, "Nah, it's not really my thing." <laughs> Um, I'm probably gonna wait it out and see if it's any interest. And then day one, I'm like, right, let's get on this. And just, I spent 20 hours straight just, <laughs> just grinding away. Um, but my my goal ended up being Inferno speeds, of course. Um, considering that you know my main focus for general content raids is not available, so it wasn't available. The only other thing I wanted to do was was Inferno, and we can talk a bit about maybe like my love for Chambers and Inferno as opposed to Tob, which is sort of just left out. It's like. The unwanted child of what I do, but um, yeah, I mean, in Inferno was just like the go the obvious goal to go for 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 the main reason of doing a couple of things. One was getting one of the fastest times. The other was just like grinding out KC, and the other one was going for pet. The three things that I thought were like good to go for anyway, with regards to content and what I wanted to do. So anyway, I'm, I'm uh, for what it's worth, my regions were. Was it Mithsalim you have to start with, and Desert secondarily? No, sorry, not, not Desert. Um, Karamja secondarily. And then I decided to pick Desert, and this was tactical, even though most people didn't do this for Inferno Speeds. Was that just and for darts? Just purely for the the ability to to smith darts. Just just that, nothing else. Ancients actually came in handy as well, but I wasn't really too focused on that. And I think at the time, my idea was like, if I want to go for fast times, I want access to darts to do lots of runs. Because you can get them from catching dragon imps and uh, Vorkath and stuff, but it's just very awkward, and I didn't want to have to go through that process of killing stuff to get darts like Grotus Guardians. Um, Were you able to get on Ancients during the leagues? Is that possible? Only if you took Desert, yeah. Really? So you could just do the whole thing, but you so, would ha so, you'd have to have different areas, right? Because so, so what was crazy was if you took Desert, you auto unlock Ancients. Oh, okay, okay. And I and once I realized that, I was like, "That's even better." Because if I end up being in a position where I'm like, "Pillars of Monka, gotta have, gotta have ancients," then we have ancients. So, okay, it worked out. It worked out nicely. 
Interesting. But uh, what was my fourth? Fourth region was uh, I unlocked Asgania last. So what am I missing? I'm missing. I'm missing one key region. Can uh, the elf do... place wasn't that for Zora? Oh yeah. Okay, the most important one, of yeah. course, that I forget. <laughs> uh, Tiraran, which I can't pronounce. I think that's right. Yeah. Which I think everyone had to take. If you're doing if you're doing range relic for T3, you have to take it because it's a blowpipe. Um, more interestingly, though, crystal armor and crystal bow became the main DPS method for, like, Zuck uh, during Inferno speeds for Trailblazer the entire time. Yeah. Because the crystal armor had like a thirty percent accuracy buff or something with the whole set, and then you had the range relic, and then you have a crystal bow but going from three tick to two tick. It was like a blowpipe on steroids. And then you and then realize then... how how crappy a one tick <laughs> blowpipe is. You're like, I can't utilize all of it because I need to keep moving. Well, that, that was the interesting thing with it because when I initially wanted to go for speeds, I was like, this is going to be a crazy challenge with regards to your movement and how you control the, the ticks and the character timing and all that. And the reality was blowpipe goes shoot, pew pew, and you can't do anything because it's one tick. Yep. You can't you can't move or you lose a tick. That's the problem with it. Um, as fun as it was. So it, it, in a sense, like sure, your time was amazing, but you also reduced the skill the skill level like from ri a ridiculously high ceiling as it currently is to just flat zero. Uh, to where you know where almost anyone can just go in. Uh, so, so to put this in perspective, once I had unlocked the sixth relic, which is drain in my case, I literally went into the fight caves on stream. I put up Mage Pro. I put my mouse on top of my microphone, sat my sat my sat back in my chair and crossed my arms, and I got a fire cave. <laughs> that was that was the stream. Wait, really? You did people. It was just auto retaliate on. Five hundred people turned up to watch me do an auto retaliate fire caves. Jesus Christ! I, I, I did a hand. I did a handstand for Jad, which was very cool. <laughs> but that should. But if if nothing else, that puts into perspective the power of both range relic, one tick blowpipe, and drain just as it stands yeah now so, uh, that, so that was just insane but it, but again it removes the skill level entirely it's, that's it's, true it's quite a shame and i've talked about that on my other podcasts where like you know items get so good in the future like there's so much little right. bits of power creep that eventually things that used to be very difficult like i mean honestly even chambers when it was first released like there was no dragon hunter lance there was no sanguinesti it was whip and normal trident, like, you know, trident yeah. of a swamp. And it was, I'm, like, just very different to what we have now. I'm very awkward about this one, but with Sang Staff, I will happily agree to use a Sang Staff and think, like, yes, this is a relevant good item that heals you. And I look at Blood Fury that gets introduced um, mid this year, and I, I despise Blood Fury. I absolutely hate it. I can't, I don't know why. Because Sang Staff to me feels like I'm doing maximal DPS, it's the best item. And Blood Fury feels like it's not a torture. And I can't wrap my head around the idea that it's just giving you free heal that allows you to keep doing DPS. And therefore it's good for things like Solar CM, no preps especially. Um, but I can't I can't personally wrap my head around this idea that it's actually better in terms of DPS, even though it's effectively the same. Yeah, especially if it's you very, lose a max a, hit a weird from it, yeah. Yeah. Trailblazer, though, again, is like a really nice example of power creep. That, like, that's the end game. That's if people are wondering, like, what the hell is power creep and why is it a problem? That's why you don't want to have to, that. That it was, it was like reminiscent of RS three days. You just AFK, AFK Jad, yep. and they they do right. You just sit there, like, get fire cape, get fire cape, get fire cape. Pet now, thank you. And I have friends in Trailblazer who would go to sleep and start a fight case. Like, <laughs> that's that, so that's, bad. That's, yeah. It's. It, I know it's fun because it's you know it's it's not something you have yeah. really access to in old school. Yeah, yeah. But we really, really do not want to have that in the main game, and it's very scary that things are. Well, I suppose we're not progressing like that, really. But it's gotta, gotta keep it in mind, I think, and especially the dev team has to keep it in mind. Yeah. No, for sure. And I see, I see like leagues as a good addition because they've at least added a distinction. Okay, this is a. Temporary game mode, they've totally um, just emphasized on that. This is temporary. Like, we're not going to be adding things from leagues into the main game. But what always scares me is, like, I'll go to Reddit after a league ends, and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, like, stackable clues were so much, so much fun. fun. And yep. this 
speeding up this was so much fun but they're like these casuals that don't really understand like health of the game they just want like instant gratification and fun and it's like oh god you're like, playing, playing the wrong game buddy i mean yeah. play, play play the next league when it comes up but yeah. please don't Ooh. it's kind of, it's it's a little scary because people do experience it and then they're like man that was so much fun and then when especially when it's gone and then they like go back to the main game they're like my xp is not high enough my you know just everything's not extreme enough that they like need more so that always kind of scares me but i think jagex understands in fact honestly i give jagex a lot of credit for yeah they make mistakes yeah they are not like perfect but like honestly they've kept the game pretty they damn have good they have an eoc our game right yep is, is kind which of is fair. impressive because it's been out for almost eight years now which no 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 mtx no eoc type things yep um do you think that makes the game in a sense a bit boring though that they're not trying to evolve combat not not to this not to the degree of old not to the degree of rs3 but sort of introduce new combat ideas or mm. so like what's so like one of the examples i like to bring up for this is max it times accuracy equals your average damage why why what's the difference between old school mechanics in the sense of dealing your average damage versus an rng damage number does it truly change anything with the exception of making pvp both fair and speed running viable like more viable anyway so you're saying that instead of getting um instead of hitting zero to your max hit and having an accuracy yeah. roll to determine whether you hit change it so you always hit half your max hit times your accuracy roll and that would and that essentially gives you an average kill time every time so right? i'm curious because okay so i've thought about this before but i feel like it makes things dull in a way but again i've never actually experienced it i don't really know but when you're just hitting the same number over and over honestly mm -hmm. okay now that i'm actually saying that kind of <laughs> kind of nice in a way but like at the same time the, the, I so don't the, know. the main the, the 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 one the things to think about are like the, it is it is huge for two aspects of the game again pvp and speed running yep because PvP suddenly becomes instantaneously fair across the board. If you are if you are catching prayers when your opponent is not, you will beat them. You absolutely will beat them. That's right? true. Um, which introduces the idea of true player skill making a genuine difference. And it's not to say that these days that player skills are not relevant. Of course it is. I mean, look at Oda's tournament literally yesterday, where the best players ended up coming out on top, generally, at least. Yep. But um, I mean, they have a PvP tracker tool, right? It shows you the stats mm -hmm. on stream, and there's and there's and what comes to mind was I think literally one of the first fights, and a dude's running a Kodai and he hits seventy percent, seventy seven percent of the barrages you think he would have hit according to the tracker, I think, and the other guys hit one hundred and four percent, yep, without a Kodai, and it's like, how is this fair? Um, and it's one of the reasons I've never enjoyed PvP is the idea that it's RNG. I know that's to some degree the appeal is that you you can hit big numbers, but the player skill just doesn't feel like it's there to me. Not like other games. Like um, you compare almost any other successful, especially esport game that's branded as like an esport and is played in tournaments. It's not RNG. It's most certainly not RNG. Um, in CS:GO, it's not RNG if I shoot towards the head and hit the head, right? Yep. Now that's extreme. Um, I remember playing PUBG a little bit, and I was like, you know what? There is no, there is no like, oh, the game chose to not shoot you in the head. Yeah. If you are on the target <laughs> and the player it stays there, like you will mm -hmm. get a headshot, and it's very satisfying. Albeit, it's a more sort of complex. You get to move around and the strategy to it. Yeah. And I don't think there's. It's not that there's not strategy to old school. But it would be very limited indeed if, if it was just like straight same hits every time. Yeah. And there's definitely like, so I think of like NHing and then I think of risk fighting, where risk fighting, it does have that skill because you can choose not to ever be chance and you can choose to like do every single, you know, thing correctly, get your, you know, your mall. I've never risk fought, but like, you know, you get all your ticks perfect and like you'll be fine because then you can just telly out if RNG doesn't go your way. But like NHing is like, you have a limited amount of supplies, and if your RNG just isn't good, you're just gonna die. Yeah, it's it's 
I don't know. It's one of the, it's one of the it's one of the big things that still to this day drives me like big away from PvP. And I've done I've done a fair not not a crazy amount, but I've done a fair share. Uh, sorry, give me one second. You're good. Sorry, all good. So, um, what, what are the negative saying? aspects to that, though? Like, do, can you think of like just be okay? Well, one is so I've been I've been camping nightmare for five months, and mm -hmm. at this point, I basically have best in <laughs> slot gear. Besides Minus having a mace for like the, mace. the one parasite you need to hit and like the husks, yeah. but like other than that, like I've had a fourteen ten solo. And it's not because I really did anything special. It's because my scythe and my harmonized staff just went off for one kill. It was just very lucky. Yep. I just was hitting constant 300, 400 XP drops. And yeah, I literally got a 14. I didn't even bring full ancestral. I, I didn't even bring two pieces of the ancestral. So I was getting two less scythe. max hits. And I still scythe got a 1410. Yeah. Scythe, scythe goes whoosh. Yep. Or, or in so, this case, chap. I definitely understand the like skill aspect. Um, it would definitely be like increased, especially like Inferno. If like Inferno was like just well, here's the thing. Here's kind of an issue about speedrunning, at least in my opinion. If if everything mm -hmm. had become like a normal hit, it's like you couldn't get a zero set on like the Inferno ever. If it was like if that's how the hits were, like they would just be impossible, basically. I'm I'm I I can wrap my head around that and I think that's fine personally. So, because okay. for one for one the set spawner means you have to deal with it, which is a good thing in terms of player skill. And two, I, I I'm I know, but no set's nice. And it's a time save, but you're only competing against how do I put this? Let let's look at it this way. I think to date None of the records that have ever existed for Inferno have been contingent upon getting a no set. How rare is it to get a no set? What's so, the calcs <laughs> on it? Do you know? I have spent the last two days with my good friend Phone Man running a extremely in-depth Zuck simulator. And the numbers came in today, less than two hours ago. The chance to get a no set is nine million two hundred and sixty four thousand zero uh, and eighty nine in one billion which comes out to about one in one hundred and eight <laughs> so that assumes you're on task 112 range spotted zero zero mystics one in 108 wow and i've had two personally so i i'm actually a slightly Boom. slightly overrate i think in the amount of zucks that i've done but there's um this this sim thing is a really interesting one. We were looking at Gino's Zuck, which happened like th four months ago now, I want to say. He got a 133 Zuck. One minute, 33 seconds, no set. And it is just unfathomable, unfathomable to think that that actually occurred. And I have the data in front of me. It's not processed. It's just sitting on my screen right now. And a 133 Zuck is a 93 second Zuck which is 155 ticks now without without sh without saying anything I can send you this from my uh, data set right here that's all the amount of ticks 155 and below that occurred out of 1 billion simulations of Zuck Jesus Christ 1 billion I know, 1 billion is overkill right Mostly, uh, you know, even a million would give you an example of what you yeah, need to see. Yeah, that is crazy but I, rare. I, I, I like my smooth graphs, damn it. So I, I, I ran a billion and it only took uh, 28 hours. 29 hours, actually. Um, it, it's not as rare as you would think, but it's really not likely. We're talking, I, I think, based from that, it's like, what, 1 in 23k? Sorry, uh, what, 23k out of a billion. So Which if you were to get a hundred, right if you were to get a hundred and twenty tick, um, Zook, you would only get that five times out of a billion, right? One one in every two hundred million times, you'd get a one one twenty. Zero point zero zero two three percent chance of getting a a Geno Zuck or better. 
Now you know you want to know what the even crazier thing about is, is about this. Gino missed ticks. Jesus. So it was probably <laughs> it was even. It was even faster. How many ticks even... did he lose? Did you like study it or did you like I, see I'm it? I'm 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 gonna find out. I'm I'm gonna make a video on this at some point in the next few days. I'm gonna find out the exact time loss that he had, and we're gonna go back and have a look. But it pushes it down and not an, an extra set of five to ten ticks. Jesus. So he. So we're talking about a truly truly rare occurrence in terms of speed running in the inferno and it's crazy to think because really there's cool. not that many people that are speed running infernos in the first place it's not like no, eventually that, somebody's like... going to get a four-piece barrows chest or something you know because there's so oh, many people that do barrows out, out of all the people who run inferno and it's an increasing community these days but the uh until recently there were less than 10 people with sub 50s and there's 11 now i'm pretty sure but 11 people who are capable of even getting sub 50 of those you assume who are able to do good consistent zucks and get there get there fast enough to make it happen it's not a lot of runs at all we're talking probably a hundred per person we're talking maybe a sample size of a thousand even even you know even if it was five thousand at best it's nothing compared to like the chances of actually happening yeah, like in, a in one in the amount of... like a one in 50 million chance yeah or something crazy well we're gonna find out soon but it's it's pretty crazy yeah um i'm kind of no, curious like with <laughs> with other calcs and like i'm just i'm thinking like you know there's an average zook time probably how how long is like the average zook supposed to take if you don't miss ticks do, like do you know that the off average top of zook is three minutes and four seconds or 306 ticks okay and so th this includes a set of assumptions that you tag everything correctly on tick and if you get a no set you two tick jad tag with a blood pipe if you get it offset you chin it it also assumes healers are procced correctly for you and that you tag them on eight ticks, so four blowpipe hits. Wow. And With all of uh, those things occurring, three or four. So what is, has anybody ever calced how long the average Inferno run should take? Like that entire run should take on average? <laughs> this is a really tricky one because there are so many different wave spawns that you'd have to work out. I think it would be impractical to ever yeah, count that. Yeah, no, for sure. Unfortunately. Yeah, we, <laughs> that so, would be actually be so crazy to do. One of my passion projects has been the Inferno Discord for the last four or five months, which is probably the most the, the sort of you know beyond beyond all the uh, specific stream stuff. This is like my one thing off stream that I've really been into. And within the Discord, we've had a a channel set up called Splits Data, and in Splits Data, we ha we have a. Uh, this is actually an edited version of a spreadsheet that I made from someone else added to this. But we've been collecting data from all sorts of runs. And we now have this really, really nice set of data for different uh, completion times. So if you make a copy of this or even have a look at some of the bottom tabs, we have um, sub-75 runs all the way down to sub-50 runs and slightly better. And we're just compiling all the like the more data the better for these, right? But we now have a really good idea of of like human limitations, I guess. And if you have a look at what's really cool is the sum of best. At the bottom right, the yeah. sum of best for Inferno is forty three minutes. Forty three minutes. Whereas the record right now is forty seven thirty nine or th uh forty seven nine yeah, forty seven thirty nine, I think. Now, of course, that's all RNG, but um, even with players playing really well and, and getting an average of things, we can still see that, you know, 48 minute runs, 49 minute runs should not be that uncommon. And there are some players who can pull off sub 50s consistently, so. Wow. This is some, like, uh, five head stuff, like. <laughs> it's it's fun I, to I'm look like at. i to, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I think it's more important to actually watch the runs and really take notes on how people are playing because it, in the moment it's very obvious at least these days to see on wave start is there something that is like genuinely good that you should do and you know like is, is there a set piece to each wave and often or not there is i'm personally interested in in a perfect run much more than i'm interested in having a faster run yeah no I for sure I, I, where it's purely skill it's in your control this is yeah, and this is another one of the reasons why I like the idea of having set hits because then you could do a perfect run and know if you did a perfect run. 
But I mean, um, I guess you can already know if you do a perfect run in the first place, and that would be impressive enough. But I see your point yeah, where it's like it's, it, you would like to at least get the results of like there's no run. there's no time correlation to yeah. doing a perfect run as it is right now, whereas you could have one, That's which true. I think is cool. And I I look at just you know something as simple as a nightmare where honestly you, you can if if i were to really try i could do an entire run perfect ticks perfect switches i would need to really focus mm -hmm. because those eight way mage switches but like you can you could pull off a perfect run pretty easily it's only a 15 minute fight but yeah, with inferno there's so much going on it's like insane so, it's like, fair to say there has never been a perfect run, and there probably won't ever be a perfect run as it stands. Especially if you think about the bats hitting you, like because you can. Oh yeah. Like you're not allowed to hit a bat. You would have to kill the major first, correct? Like that would be the definition uh, perfect. Yeah, it, I suppose that I suppose that's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends. It depends. If if you set one of the things as like a bat is going to get to you. And the major is not going to have taken damage. I think in that circumstance, you would assign yourself like the idea that killing the bat is a good idea. True. And you would make there would be a run. lot of so things going this on. Is, this is even more stuff that gets into it. But Interesting. Well, <clears throat> we did... So I did post a Twitter link um, this Friday. So on Christmas, we posted something. And this is, again, for the listeners out there. Every single time there's a Sebae cast, the Friday before, I will post a tweet with your guys' topics and like specific things you want us to talk about. And like seriously, have to emphasize once again that we will get to your topics basically. Like per, unless it's a stupid topic, but there's no stupid <laughs> topics. No, no, no. But like seriously, like if you want if you want us to talk about something, you have a very, very high likely chance of us talking about it. So follow my Twitter, follow Addy's Twitter. I'll also be on the thing. But let me go to the Twitter. Okay, so here it is got a bunch of topics we're also gonna just be rambling on about other things but let's we already rambled oh yeah a crazy amount <laughs> no we got a lot we have a ton of stuff to talk about and like this isn't even ton actually you know what the first thing i want to talk about is first thing i want to talk about isn't even on the twitter it's um something that addy was telling me a little bit about and i'm actually really curious because i don't even re i don't understand exactly what it is but i think i know what it is Okay, so I hope I understand. Okay. What what are granite chins? Oh yes. Okay, thank okay, you. Can we just talk yeah. about that? Like just this go is, into it. Just before explain. Before I do anything, I'm gonna bring up a notepad and just type granite chins on. <laughs> Pu purely to keep myself on track because it's already it's already been a nice curvy road all around. But um granite chins is like my latest brainchild idea. Sort of the uh, this is this is this is born from the idea that yeah, they're useful for inferno speed running and that's kind of my ulterior motive here. But at the same time, Black Chins are a level 65 range weapon, which is which is quite low these days. We got Blowpipe at 75, and we got, you know... Actually, I don't know what else... <laughs> I don't know what else is beyond 75, to be honest, but... Anyway, we, we know the system's terrible for, for labeling items for what their level is, but... Black Chins is at level 65. We could easily have something at 75. Granite Chins. We have Dust from Grotesque Guardians. Untradeable Drop. Wouldn't affect the economy if you uh, allow them to be used somewhere else. So giving uses to granite dust is something that's come up a few times for, well, across the years. And no one's ever really come up with a good solution for where they would, you know, use this dust other than cannibals. So, what about on Black Chin Chompers? Make turn them into granite chins, level 75, plus 2, plus 3 max hit, plus 10 accuracy for ranged. Uh, maybe something cool like re re removes the idea that chin accuracy is dependent on its range from the target. Maybe um, could in, could like increase the explosive damage around it. I don't know, but um, in short, it gives black chins a range level increase and another use. Takes them out of the market because it makes them untradeable. Gives granite dust another use, which has been asked about forever. By extension, increases the likelihood that people want to do grotesque guardian boss and or stack up the dust. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, that alone is great. And then you have the idea that. Sure, even if you were to use them for range training to get faster XP rates, you still have to go collect the dust. It's not actually more efficient. Um, if your plan includes killing Grotesque Guardians for, like, something else to get the dust as a byproduct, yeah, maybe it's efficient, but I, I've thought about it and I can't think of a reason why you'd do that. And the same sort of goes for... Um, like, you know, if you were using Granite Cannibals for doing range training, it's not efficient. 
I, d I don't see why you'd ever go to the boss unless you were like specifically pattern thing or something strange. Yep. No, um, I think that's so. It's exactly yeah. what I was thinking because I we never actually talked about it, but I remember seeing it. And I was thinking that's probably gonna be like some extra max hit to black chins. I think it's a great idea, honestly, because <clears throat> like we have granite cannonballs. I mean, who really even uses cannonballs nowadays? Like for real. But besides like Slayer, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Okay, that's yeah. that's a good point. <clears throat> but yeah, I think uh, I think granite chins would actually be pretty cool. I think uh, I'm trying to think because like. Mm. Just adding an additional max hit or something, or like three max hits potentially, to mm -hmm. each like ex to each hip splat or whatever, would be good. But yeah, like what you're saying, where there's like maybe an additional perk to it that just the other chins can't even do. How many? I don't think it should be like mega OP. It just needs to be that little boost that gives you. Yeah, yeah, Not, something it, that it, can it, be. It used. should be something that is. It is something that should never be worth the time getting the dust. Is is the bottom line? That's the limiting factor. It would be very anything, hard to make it that OP that, where yes. it's actually worth to go to Grotesque Guardians. Yeah, I suppose. Do you like the fact that Granite Dust is untradeable? Yes. And I've got 108,000 left in the bank still after using 100,000. <laughs> so I, I've been saving mine as well, which is great. And I think it should stay untradeable. Not just because I have some. That's kind of the meme. But also the idea that it's... That it wouldn't uh, ever I, I, just be in a up just a buff like you can just buy it. It's a buff. It it would be yeah. something it's, that you have it, to work towards. Essentially, toward. it makes it something unique that you have to go and climb off. It, it also, the thing with this is that it makes main accounts Iron Man in a sense, right? Yep. That's kind of what it does. And um, I don't play my. I I, I had an Iron Man for a long time. Uh, but I kind of gave it away to a friend after I realized I was never gonna really get into the mode too much. But the idea of, of like playing an Iron Man is still really fascinates me and and still at some point i imagine i will probably pick one up like long term maybe in like a year or two when i get really bored of the game but <laughs> until um, raid 3 comes out when do you think that's coming like... out by the way do you know do you have any idea i don't know 2022 at this rate it's it's a shame they're not giving anything away about it and we know they haven't started we know for certain they have not started development yet which is a shame you know what i think a lot of us thought that it would be to some degree under under development this year it's like, it's okay, so it's kind of interesting you point out that, like, you know, untradeable drops kind of makes mains a little bit more like an Iron Man, sort of, where it's just mm -hmm. not everything's purchasable. And there's there's so many items that make well, Iron Man like mains in a way, like, where, or make mains like Iron Man, where yeah, it's just like yeah. there's a bunch of untradeable things. I mean, some one really good example is the Vorkath head, right? Yep. I, think, I think that's by far one of the best examples in the sense that it forces you to do this entire quest line to go and kill Vorkath, like 50 of them. Well, not necessarily, but, you know, li likely to kill 50 of them just to get this one upgrade for your backpack to make it good. So I've kind and of... I've like, It forces progression, right? Yeah, yeah, Ultimately. no, for sure. I've kind of um, messed around. It's kind of a... It's definitely a meme at this point. But, like, I've talked to my stream about, um, like... Okay, I don't play a main. I, I mm -hmm. exclusively play Iron Man. But I was thinking, like, honestly... Mains have kind of gotten to the point, and I think of little things. It hasn't actually gotten to this point, but I I tend to think mains have gotten to a point where you can just basically buy anything you want. Like, it's not actually that extreme, but I think of, like, clues. Like, you can literally just buy clues. If you have enough money, you can just buy, like, stuff zero time. And, yeah. And I always I always I, think... I'd go the step further. I'd say you can buy just about anything. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, really, I really would. Yeah, and we're not even talking about services yet, but <laughs> I mean, you can literally yeah, buy mean, anything. <laughs> but if, like, if you're, if you're going to spend like IRL to genuinely buy the account, you can. You, I mean, services gave quotes on full accounts, like max completionist Jesus. accounts. Jesus, they've they've done it. No one's bought them, but the, the you know the option exists, which yeah. is what's silly. No, I think so. I I it was just kind of like food for thought. But what if mains could? What if what if there was no untradeable item in the entire main game? Every single thing could be purchased. But <laughs> but, but 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 before we before you start thinking of it, you have to have the requirement to still wear things. So so you couldn't just buy a ninety nine construction cape and wear it and utilize it. You would still have to have that skill to use it. But you could oh, you could buy it, and I you could heard. you could buy master clue caskets. You could buy an infernal cape. Um, to wear the infernal cape, though, you would need to have Completely bought. <laughs> no, no, no. You would have. No, 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 no. 
Oh wait, actually, I'm trying to think how it wait, worked. Which, how it worked how exactly? It, that's, because that's an odd one, right? Because because there is no actual physical requirement to wearing a, an infernal cape. You can wear one at one defense. I feel like this is a bit contradictory because for something like that, you would have. Well, I I think an infernal cape you would just be able to wear it. Yeah, yeah. What. No, no, no. You would. Right. And you wouldn't even need to complete the fight caves. You would just need to buy your own fire cape. Yeah. Show it to the. Or wait, no, you wouldn't yeah. even need to do that. You just wear the no, infernal you just, cape. You just buy the infernal cape. That's true. That's true. Yeah. No, well, but I, I, I was kind of like food for thought where it's like, what if every single thing, you do a quest, you can buy every single untradeable thing that you're about to get in the quest and you can just buy it all. Like, it's just every single item is untradeable I, or is tradable. I have, sorry. I, I have to say, what's, what's the real difference between that and today with the exception of like certain items being untradeable? Like, I know, I know that's obvious, that's the obvious difference, but it's like, is there really a big change in how the game would be played and the economy? I don't personally think so. There were a few things that we thought of because a bunch of uh, my chat was like saying certain things that would actually be really messed up in a way. Well, um, like pure pure accounts having access to yeah just like stuff all, yeah there's have. there's obviously going to be a ton of like just crazy things that we haven't even thought of that would happen to it but again i'm not advocating this i'm just saying food for thought like what if every single thing was tradable like you just get whatever you want imagine like you could you could literally just buy the only th oh this was the other thing you could buy pets Oh, you could they were tradable. Pet. Pets were tradable. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> Pets were tradable. Every I single thing's even... tradable. It, it's it's the <laughs> it's so absurd to the point that it's like that that probably would. Oh man, the th the, th the thing with this is like in a lot of other games, buying items is like on a marketplace. Old school doesn't have that. And if you want your way into the game, if, if you're like, hey, I, I can start collecting RuneScape items because everything's available, you can't actually do that unless you start buying bonds. And no one actually buys, well, some people buy bonds, but no one really buys bonds. So so you're creating this, like, ridiculously large illegal, illegal marketplace, more than, the, more than it already is, to fuel the addictions of people who now want to collect everything because they can. Yeah. That's That's probably the bigger issue, I think. More than, like, it would just be for general game integrity. It it would completely compromise whatever's left of <laughs> of the uh, the like the black market. It would just make it sort of mainstream to just go and buy. It. Jagex would have to do some stuff where they're like, okay, now now we're like gonna allow this or yeah, no, it would be know. insane. Like no, either way, an uproar from one side or the other. Oh yeah, no no no. Like I'm just. It's it would be way too like I'm not. I am again not advocating this whatsoever. I'm just thinking about it every single thing was tradable i mean on the on, on the complete on the complete flip side what if everyone's an iron man <laughs> yeah no i quit i quit in 2007 when everyone basically became an iron man yeah i mean they, it happened right essentially <laughs> and it wasn't fun you lack that sense of community if yep. you can't do stuff together in fact when i came back to old school in 2015 like the ge had our had just been released a few months prior and I didn't know any like different really because that was my first time playing old school. Like I played back in 2004 to 2007, but when I realized the GE was in the game, I got really sad. Just like the first time logging into old school. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's, a, that's just a shame that the GE is here. And I don't know for something. And I, I understand because first of all, I never played with out the GE in old school where everybody's kind of, grown up you know they have mm -hmm. irl stuff to do and they don't want to just be stuck on zybez all day trying to get things <laughs> sold but at the same time that was the beauty of runescape where it's like okay you can be a middleman to these things you can be inefficient you don't need to gain xp if you want to gain xp you're probably not going to make as much gp because you're going to have to deal with middlemen to sell your stuff in bulk to so they can sell to other people that want it's just it was more of a like a live sort of like economy where now it's just everything's just GE. It's just, it's just automated essentially. Yeah. yeah. It's it's kind you, of you, sad you, in a way. You, as you say, you literally cut out the middleman. Yep. It just streamlines things, but it, it also it also introduces the idea of, of skimming bots. Um, I don't know. I don't really know the effect of those bots having the economy again, but it can't be. It can't be great. 
But now you put a GE tax in. Now we're talking. That kills off some of those parts. Let's talk Probably about GE want... tax. GE tax is a fun one. GE tax falls into the category of just in you know general money sink, right? Yep. And there's there's two things to cover when you get into this this topic, and that's item sinks, GP sinks. So let's tackle let's tackle the GP sync one because this is the obvious like good thing for the game, right? Yep. Generally, it's a good thing for the game. You, you take out a crazy amount, okay, probably a problem. But you take it out in moderation. You keep it, you keep it such that the price isn't just it's super inflating. So you say you, well, at least here in some notes I'm looking at, a zero point one percent GE tax. So it wouldn't scale. It's just everything is a zero point one. And then would it round down or up if it was like not even enough to? I've definitely said this. I'm not sure I've wrapped my head around what it actually does. I think the idea is that if you were to buy an item, you would have to put... So if someone labels an item as like, I'm selling this for 1k, you have to buy it for, 100 and, for, for 1k and 1gp, I guess. And that 1gp is gone forever. Anything below 1k, though, would just be the same price? Was that what you would probably just say? I imagine that's probably sensible. Otherwise, you end up like completely killing off those kind of items. And the volume will be super low, I think. I, I don't know. I have to wrap my head around like how the econom eco economy works in that sense. But I would say a 1% GE tax. I'd in fact, I would say a 1%? A two, I would say a 2% tax. And this, the only reason I say that is so that trading normal trading becomes a thing where oh, yes. where I've you could actually become a trader and make money you could just actually deal without you could just sell things that would be the normal price and you could actually that i don't know it's just kind of like adds that like um other That's aspect really... where you could actually kind of trade again but the ge is still there if you're just lazy now two percent is extremely fucking high when you think of like big well, items well, Let's keep it one percent and think about a Tebow. Call it call it one bill. You're, you're losing ten mil to the G every single time you trade a Tebow. Yep. For t for big ticket items that are over even like a hundred mil, that's still a mil save. You're probably going to try and find someone to trade on World Three Hundred Two. So that does in fact bring back the trading scene big time. Do you uh, think that any, encourages sort of like a scamming or? Um... Yeah, ab absolutely, it does. Right. Do you think it outweighs? Do you think that, that the negative aspects would just completely yes. outweigh the? Yes, um... absolutely. Well, no, I, I think I think the positives outweigh the negatives. Okay. Plus, I think the trading, the idea of the trading scene on World Three Two, is really cool. Yeah. And it's one of those things we all remember is just like big, massive groups gathering, spamming chat. Yep. And and as I think most people, I'm well, not most, but a lot of people, I learned to touch type by just spamming G stuff. That's that's how I learned, and I still got awful technique with how my finger placement is on the keyboard, but I can touch that fluently. That's cool. It's one of those things you just you, know, you pick up from just yeah. G spamming. Yeah. Um, now I miss I miss the days where you'd be at like Falador. Like there was like areas. There was like Falador Park. Yeah, there was like Falador Park, and then there was Falador yeah. Bank, and then there was like there was like little areas where back kid. These are where the rares are sold. These are where this is sold. And I know I'm I'm reliving nostalgia when I say this, and. I don't even play a main, so I don't fully understand. But I think adding a GE tax is extremely healthy for the game. Now, yeah. the actual price would, you know, like like the actual like percentage tax that can be discussed. But like, I would prefer higher rather mm. than too low, where it doesn't even make a difference. I would want it to make a difference. But, want it to be relevant enough to yeah, be exactly. causing actual changes for the play. Yeah, no, I'm on board with that. The, the the more interesting thing in this is perhaps why has Dragax not done this or considered this or even brought it up in polls and stuff. I don't I don't think they polled it at any point. And it makes you wonder like why is why is something that is seemingly so good and that everyone thinks is good not being looked at seriously. Some people don't think it's good, and I've talked to people that just don't they they it's their selfishness, which I mean I'm not saying I'm selfless or anything but like there there is people that really love the ge and it's extremely convenient and it's just is nice. that the main thing that comes up i i would so I, I would have thought that it's like more of a from an economical standpoint this is actually bad and here's why rather than like hey i just want to use the ge yeah because no. it, it doesn't stop using the g that's the thing it just means that you're spending 0.1 percent more money on the ge 
but you're losing margins anyway effectively you know it's like i don't i don't think that's a great um it, it, it no it's it's not idea. even an argument it's just people that just don't want it and they'll just vote no to yeah. it if it was but i think the majority definitely do want a ge tax mm -hmm. and i mean me being an iron man i'd vote yes to it does not affect me at all but i still feel like it's healthy for the game I'm actually curious if it's not some sort of legal thing. I know I know so so many things at Dragix these days with regards to GP get blocked because of legal issues on their end, and how they can't necessarily like take out game GP just randomly. They have to have a good reason, or they have to you know go through these loopholes and blah blah blah. blah. That's so Cause interesting. It, cause, because it because it would be like destroying money, right? In a sense, yeah. and you can't do that. Or I, I, I'm not sure that's the reason. I'm just you know. Interesting. It, there, there's that sort of. You know, many times, especially in content creators, you ask about certain things and like, hey, is this an option? Is that is blah blah? Is this an option? Is destroying items an option? And they're like, well, yes, but also legality. And we we know they can't get into it, but it's it's a prevalent issue with regards to changing things like that. What do you think? I, mm. Um, sorry, what were you gonna say? Did you have oh, else? I was thinking. I was thinking about. I was gonna. I was about to move on to the duel arena. But... Yeah. No, I want. I want to move on to there right now. Yeah. Actually. Um, because. Uh, well, first, I want to ask um, the GE, like, we'll, we'll, or sorry, not the GE, the dual arena tax. I first want to step in there, but then I just want to go like full out into the dual arena, what the mm -hmm. effects are on the game. But do you think the dual arena tax that was introduced how many years ago now? Like two, maybe two ish, I suppose. Yeah. Two years two ago. Enough. Like, do you think that was good? And do you think that was enough? Or, you know what? Let's just let's just start uh, from the beginning. What? Just tell me about the dual arena. Just go. Just let me just go. I have a great history with the dual arena, <laughs> which is how anyone starts when they've won a lot of money at the dual arena, which I have. Yep. Um, for anyone who for anyone who's seen my my account and my bank on my main, it's it's approaching twenty bill and it has been over twenty bill. Um, I didn't actually ever like the dual arena, funnily enough, but. Late into my very first year of playing, after I started streaming for about like three months or something, I think, I ended up getting hacked, which I don't want to go into in too much detail, but it was uh, a targeted thing where they had access to my email um, and sent me and sent me one of those requests. So, so they they had, they had like tried to log into my account to prevent me from getting in. I'd I'd seen it and sit and seen my account was locked. I tried to recover it, went through the email. Gave, the, gave away my password because I was naive and silly and didn't think too much and just thought, oh, crap, my account's compromised. I better sort it out. So that was down to bad email security. But uh, in short, I had about like four bill at the time, which was which was good. Gives you a near max set of everything. But I, I ended up losing what I had on me and I was doing max thermy, scything with suffering, prim, scythe, slay helm, infernal cape that I just freshly got. All gone. They dropped everything, just, you know. Didn't get the bank, which is great, but I was in—I was left in a position where I'm like, "Man, I—I I don't like the arena, but I'm happy to do a rebuild if it's—if it comes to that, and if I—I I, you know—I want my chance to get stuff back. So that's—that was my reason for starting to go to the arena. And once I had everything back, it kind of just progressed from there, uh, with no help from Phone Man once again, who tended to go in alongside me. But there was a—a a streak of maybe two and a half weeks where I would spend most of the day with a lump sum from Phone Man and myself. And I think I I turned, I want to say I turned a total of about three bill, about two bill mine, one bill Phone Man's, into a total of about 35 in those two weeks. Jesus. So lucky. <laughs> very, very, very lucky. Um, but in short, I ended up with something like a total of like 20, 22, 23 bill to play with, which is an absurd amount of money um, in the game because that, and, and I had I had a mule account which had two max sets on, my main which had a max set and my alt which had a max set, along with like three times max cash letter. It, it's an absurd amount of money to think about. Most people in that scenario, they probably just real world it. But given that I'm a moral gamer and I didn't really think that I had any reason to want to compromise my account by real worlding or had any reason to want the real world money to this day I still have pretty much all of it minus like some stuff that I've either given away or used up in training other accounts and stuff 
Um, but anyway, one of the interesting things with it is that I have some stupid collections. Most notably the one million purple sweets, which is, I think, around six bill right now in terms of value on the G. That's a cool collection, probably quite unique. I don't think anyone else has that. And also a useful one, which is quite rare, I think. Most collections you can't keep around with you and that sort of flex. And they're increasing too, the price, right? 7k I mean, right now, I think. Jesus. I think, they used I, to be like 2k, like 2.3k, like a couple I years ago. I started buying them. I started buying them at 2.7k and I took them to 6.5k at the peak. <laughs> And I distinctly remember at one point in stream, I had like 940k. And I was like, guys, come to the G, help me buy them out. And I was paying people because I still had crazy amounts of money. And I distinctly remember Gherkins, Gherkin, even Gherkins came along at some point because he was like, this is free money. And he comes along and he sells me 10k for 60 mil. I'm like, is this what I've, is this what it's come to? <laughs> 10 for 60 mil. Wow. But, um, it's a crazy amount. And then, of course, they fell back down to like three and a half in the week after I stopped buying. And if you go on GE tracking, you can still see this lovely curve from 2.5 up to up to like five and a half, I think it is. <laughs> and it's dropped back down. But now it's back up to like seven. So I don't I don't know how I feel about it. Um but I do know I'll probably never sell this I'll, I'll never sell them. So it's not really money that I've it's not money that I'll ever make back. Yeah, it's just, just like, a collection. It's just, it's just in a collection. And the worst part is because I have to keep them over a million, I've only actually got 10k usable sweets after we stop them. <laughs> yeah, you have it, to keep that number and it looking is, nice. It is, a, it is a six bill just thrown into a hole in the ground and covered up, <laughs> and it's got a nice pretty flower on top, and that's the, the flower is what people see, but they don't see the investment to it. You, you know how, like, purple sweets, they have, like, the the sprite changes when you go up from, like, one to ten yeah. to a hundred? <laughs> it would be really cool if it actually increased from, like, a thousand to ten thousand oh, to a million, man. and then to ten million like but yeah, nobody that, knows nobody knows what it looks like nobody you know? knows at 10 mil <laughs> yeah that that would be really cool actually that yeah. would I, i'm not sure anything else changes like arrow stacks and stuff that people have but nah, it's always just five arrows i be, i'm kind of it'd be fun yeah that's an interesting idea maybe that maybe they consider that if we have a put in a word about it yeah that would Sprite, be sprites sprites are notoriously hard to generate though and the thing is Remember is all the trouble with those divines oh yeah no <laughs> Um, but like, I don't know if you've ever dropped purple. I mean, I'm assuming you've dropped purple sweets, but like, I've dropped purple sweets. Yeah. I would love to see that because when you drop over a hundred, it looks massive. And then oh, God, I would you drop a hundred k or something. It's I just would, like yeah, I would love to see candy. dropping a hundred k or a million. It's just a block. It just is like one of those armor sets, you know, like that, that big. That would be that would be really cool to see. I would love that. That's a that's an RS3 feature for sure, but I love it. <laughs> Just drops like one million sweets, and just a mountain appears of candy falling down, crashes the server, and the sweets are gone. Do you think <clears throat> the dual arena should be in the game? No, I know I, I I didn't think about it much until recently, but Kemp Q released a series of videos and uh, talked about it a lot, and is still pretty fairly hard campaigning it to be removed, and. Especially once I watched his vids and, so, and, so, and sort of thought about it a bit, I'm like, yeah, I, I really want it removed. It's, it's essentially just a, it's a hub for criminal activity, ultimately, is what it comes down to. And it's not to say that there are people who use it legitimately, and I'd like to consider myself to be sort of a legitimate user, in the sense that I was trying to get back what I had lost, and then <laughs> eventually I'd started using it a bit too much. But it's like, there are people who could benefit to some degree and who also wouldn't be affected in a bad way. If I had been cleaned at that point, I'd be like, okay, whatever, just restart, play, play an Iron Man, maybe have more fun on that. And the reality is, as long as you're not in that sort of place where you're going to get addicted, it's okay. But it's so few people who are in that position. And it's it's the majority of the time, it's guys who are going to get in, lose their GP, make one mil, lose it again. And even if they have the ability to make, you know, 50 mil at some point, 100 mil, 2 bill, 3 bill, they're still going to go back there. Yep. And I've seen it, and, you know, we've all seen it hundred times different people um in addition it's just non-stop scamming back when i was staking consistently i like you know probably i, I would say 90 percent of trades are scams 90 percent or more it's like i don't know i it, it's just odd that it still exists and again it's one of those legal things i think i think it makes jagex it, a lot of money i think 
I think the higher ups understand that like any sort of any yeah. form of gambling in a video game is going to make them a shit ton of money. And so it's very hard to. I was so surprised they added a, um, a arena tax. Just, like, seriously, I was so surprised it was actually a tax that was put in place. I'm like, wow. I just thought this place would never be touched. I thought it was just this thing where JMods can't do anything about it because the higher ups. I, I don't know. Maybe that's kind of like more conspiracy theory ish of me to think that the higher ups are like these dudes that just will do anything for money and just keep the door like I don't know but to me I would be so 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 surprised if the dual arena was fully deleted but I've been surprised before um I just think the dual arena put gives so much money it's it's almost like a form of microtransaction for yeah. Jagex I suppose what really gives me hope about it is the idea that there is a tax and yeah. the fact that there is one means what if we raise it? That's true. Which is an interesting point here. So if you could raise it, what would you raise it to? Uh personally I mean shit. Because I I've got a number in mind. Fifty <laughs> percent. Yep. So it's just literally pointless. So so if, if you go there trying to like Martin Martin Gaylor is it like one, you know, you, you put in a hundred, you lose a hundred, you put in two hundred, you put in four hundred, like that kind yeah. of thing. You can't do that. There's no, there's no way on earth that you can do that. So if you, if you go there, you understand the risk is like, this money is going to go out the game. I have to go all in, and I have to yolo it. And you can't afford to do these little, little stakes and just try and trundle along. You just won't make it. And this, this, this really will force people's mindset towards it, because then, the, like the long-term stakers, really can't do their thing where they just keep going back there because they can't win those in a row. They just can't win in a row repeatedly. And even if they do, it's not a massive game. Do you think just deleting it at that point would just be the better move, or is the yeah. is the fifty percent basically a meme for for you, or are you? Is that no, like a... no, it's 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 a, it's a genuine number, and the idea is that if if for whatever reason it really can't be deleted, but the tax exists and, and can be changed, put it to something that j just stops the activity in there. Beyond I... the people who like want to just chuck their bank and are accepting the are accepting yeah. the fact that that money's going, it would definitely. Um, it, it would it would definitely arena. kill the arena, but I almost have a feeling that there will be people there just sitting there waiting for their scam to work, just just waiting for their one scam to work where it's a guaranteed well, I win this. Yeah, but hey, they they win less, and at the same time, I think the awareness. I, I think that people really will not go there. <laughs> it, no, they definitely like, won't. That's no, but you're 100 percent right. It, it's like if you wanted to. To put this in perspective, you're better off taking that money out of the game via RWT, putting it into a gambling site, spinning 45% odds, and putting it back into old school. That's that's the kind of links you'd have to go to. Or th those are the links you would go to to maintain better GB ratio than the arena would give you. Do you think um, right. deleting the dual arena or adding an absurd tax would just encourage people to find their own ways of gambling? third, like Kind of like their own like little third-party ways of doing it, maybe in-game still? Like you know how there there are ways there are ways to get some sort of uh, gambling thing where like for example like no you... because no no and for one reason only and that is because the arena holds your money it acts as the middleman yeah and but that's what no, I'm saying there's it would, no way to it would it would people, become people it would, would end up falling for the like the whole middleman thing and then lose their GP yeah no I mean but it would it would just well, basically become this trusted clan per se saying like. You trade us, and then we'll do something like, for example, we'll do a DDS spec against something, and if it rolls higher than this, then yeah, you'll get I'm, money. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe that kind of thing would pop up. I'm also inclined to believe that if Jagex were, were, you know, they, they, I don't think they're blind enough to like not have a look at the knock-on effects. They would, they would have to shut down CCs like that effectively. And they, they are against the rules, like already, like it's straight up against forms the rules. of chance. So but... it, it would become the norm. I hope to report that kind of thing quickly and sort it out so i don't know <laughs> i don't know give give me the 50 percent any day I'd, I'd be happy and i'll delete it but how many players do you way. how many players do you think in the game just play the game to gamble like percentage wise out of that's, just take just one. just take away bots like take away the bots like how many real players that play do you think are just playing to gamble because i know it's really I don't think I don't think it's that many. I'd say less than 
and that's still a pretty large number to it's, just it's say still, exclusively I'd say, I'd say but I'd say like I don't know call, call it even like one percent that is a large large number it probably it probably is less than that now I think about it who knows but yeah the, the, I, guess, I guess it's hard to think about because a lot of the guys who want to do it can't necessarily do it they have to make their GP because they have no GP because they just gambled it away so the just, reality is yeah it's I, harder to track that number I think sometimes because I've heard like Reddit posts where it's like there's like just gambling addicts that are just like please lock my account from ever going to the dual arena like that do you think like because like, I know people that are addicts want to not gamble but it's so addicting that it's just they keep going back and like but then there's people that just you know even though there's the lows there's still the highs that they look forward to to going back and stuff which I guess would be any addict they look forward to the high which is the reason they go back but like I don't know. Do you think just getting rid of the only real game, like the only like Jagex form of gambling, do you think getting rid of that would um, get rid of those kind of urges? Because I know, for example, like a lot of people that were gambling at ad addicts that start in Iron Man never go back to the Duel Arena ever again. It's just because it's just it's not convenient. It's not like right there. Yeah. In front of it's... I I think that. The, it's called, it's sort of one of those like is it worse to gamble in old school than in somewhere else but in short no because you can buy old school gp quite easily and and ultimately i think what what all this gambling stuff comes down to is how is it affecting your you financially irl and if it's not effect, if, it, if it's not wise. affecting you financially yeah there's like there's, there's like if, if you're consistently just not spending money from irl and you have like a stable whatever and you're just losing your little gp in game i'm actually not that concerned for the person in that sense because they're clearly sensible enough to make that that distinguishable difference yeah, between this sure. is my this is my GP here and I'm never touching IRL stuff. That that that's something else. Like, yeah, they might be unhappy about it, but start an Iron Man, man. That's, that's you know that solves the problem. Mm -hmm. And then for the people who are like actually involved in the IRL money in the arena, that's a genuine problem. But hey, even if you remove that arena, they're gonna do it somewhere else. It doesn't mean you should not remove the arena. It just it just, you know, says that they're going to do it regardless. It's kind of at that at that stage they need some help. Yeah. It's not really hmm. interesting. I don't think there's much you can do for it either way. But again, it's it's not like it's not like gambling in old school is necessarily better than gambling elsewhere. That's definitely not a reason to keep the arena. Yeah. No, and it's it's definitely just it's in a video game. Like there's so many video games nowadays where there is some form of gambling and it's like <clears throat> most of the time that won't really affect you unless you just have an extremely addictive personality and you start blurring the line between like reality and um do you have anything else to talk about the duel arena i know it's just it's sort of just like whenever it's i don't know it's kind of like that toxicity you do like duel arena is just it is just renowned for well, toxicity I love I'd love them to bring back the wishing well. This is kind of like the same school of thought. What was the reason they didn't? Was that some sort of legal thing as Le well? Or? Legal, legal, legal thing. Confirmed legal thing. I asked about it quite recently, and they were like, "No, it's, you can't delete stuff like that. <laughs> you can't. You can't just take stuff out of the game, whether it be items or GP. You just can't do that." I don't know why it's a thing in RS three in comparison to old school, but it's yeah, they can't uh, do it. Weird. Um, there was discussion about like different ways to take out GP. Um, framed came up with some good ones, I think, about sort of like what if you added an AGS to an AGS and made an enhanced AGS and that consumed it and you would gain minor attack buffs, that kind of thing. Where you know, this kind of applies to almost any high tier item, but especially I, for I stuff like AGS, which feel, is crashed in pros. I feel like they couldn't add any bonuses, I feel like it would have to be exclusively cosmetic because. As soon as uh, you've made it better, then it's like the AGS is just useless in the first place. And then it's like, I don't know. Like, I kind of understand your point, but like, or at his yeah. point, I guess. But it's like, I almost feel like it would just have to be a cosmetic or just something that's... It, it raises the question, like, GP Sinks is, is nice to like keep everything nice, price stable, all that good stuff. But in terms of taking items out of the game, you have to take out such a massive proportion of them for anything to happen. And the other thing is, like, does it really matter if the item is just going down to, like, almost nothing? I mean, what, like, an Arcane Press goal is, like, 900k right now? That's the thing. I, I don't find an issue. I know people get really attached to prices yeah. of items. They think, like, Nightmare 
like inquisitors because it was 300 mil or 400 mil at some point it needs to always be that way it's like no that's i mean like there's prices don't need to be the same like it, they really don't it's just kind of our perception of it it's like they can drop. i think that's true yeah like arcane is one of the it, it's the you know it's one of the best pros in the game but it's super accessible and common and, and yep i don't know there's nothing wrong with it being 900k other than the fa and other than the fact that we've seen it at three mil for such a long time yeah hey, no that's literally price, it. Pri pri prices change i'm surprised bandos it'd be nice to, is still it'd be like... nice to see bandos has gone up this year i that, actually brought it up as insane to me i brought it up as an example of something that was going down to try and prove a point like hey people have been farming bandos so much it's obviously going down let's have a look at the graph i, I bring it up and it's just like slowly climbing I'm like oh okay no, <laughs> no like, god damn it that. you ignore that example please no, it's but, it's actually kind of but, strange because that's been out for so long, so heavily camped, yeah. and yet prices remain I, steady. I went I went to that example specifically because it's something that was obviously being continuously farmed, and yet you would expect that to be have a consistent decline if the economy was also like inflating, right? Is that the right way? Something like economy that. E economy inflating. Bad, I, someone correct me if I'm wrong in comments, but the, the <laughs> oh, they'll like, be sure to trust me. For such, for such a stable long-term item, you'd expect it to be on the down, much like the RS3 stuff. But that's not the case. It's it's the opposite. And if, if you go to that as like one of the prime examples of, like, is there inflation, and the answer is no, then there obviously isn't a problem with it. And that, and, and by extension, that means that other items that are going down aren't a byproduct of this, that um, inflation. It's just how the item belongs. It's just where it is. So... Yeah. No, I... A big part of it is that I'm an Iron Man. I don't actually care what item prices are and i've turned <laughs> yeah. off bank prices unless i do like a bank video so i just have no like seriously i don't know how much items cost like i really don't and and it's really cool because i've played iron man for so long now like four years basically where items now have their own internal value in my mind where like for example i always bring this up as like a crossbow when the revenant weapons first came out um i was just uh, like i was like i need this like i need a crossbow crossbow was the yeah. one item i needed and i camped it for like three months and i finally got it after three months and initially it was like 450 mil and i saw it as a 450 mil item i was like that is in, like it's just so good you know and but by the time i got it it was only 80 mil and then now it's like nine 20, mil 30. or something oh, it's nine oh, yeah it's super low now was, and that I'm, was in part due to the rev change maybe but either way like yeah. it dropped crazy right? I, but in my mind i'm still like this is still a half a bill weapon in my mind which is kind of interesting that it works that way yeah, but i, I, I mean, still look at it that way it's one of those items that is is very similar to arcane press scroll i think it's it's like conceptually it's it's worth more but in terms of like the main game because people don't actually use yep. the wilderness or if they have if they have goals in there they complete it so quickly it's like, what do you use a crossbow for? Most people, it's like, I want to kill Chaos Ellie. Gets pet in three kills. I'll sell this now. <laughs> yep. I, I think that's generally how it goes. So there's not much use for it, even if it is a really good item. Yeah. So, no, it's... And and they just were shot out so much. Like, you just saw rev activity. Every single world. Tons of people yeah. in every single world. And, like, the fact that those weren't even the key items people were looking for. People were looking for the 16 mil relics, basically, for so long now. It's like... Mm -hmm. the they literally and i've already talked about this on previous casts but like they had revenants come out at first they started shitting out 100 noted dragon plate legs you know yeah. and uh, which which were yeah. basically 100 and what would basically was a 16 mil drop very very silly but like then they just changed it to be statuettes where they're guaranteed loss on death and you have to trade them in to get the money and that was still a horrible thing just here here's gp and then they said we will revert this like we'll change it as soon as we find out or as soon as we are given some uniques like some ideas for uniques and then they come out with the weapons and they don't get rid of the damn thing they said they'd get rid of when we came out with uniques and so now we have yeah. weapons and these and it's just like you understand these weapons are going to be dirt cheap because you've just in, like there was yeah, there was no trade-off it's a bit confusing yeah, and they were like, "Why are revs so like 
what revs need to be nerfed it's like oh my god like you guys like i felt like nobody understood that the one fix to revs was get rid of the damn uh ancient relics like just get rid of them just delete them the the rev weapons will go up in price they won't there won't be as much gp coming into the game like seriously getting rid of those like uh statuette yeah, artifacts were a huge deal I hadn't thought about it on that level, but yeah, like relics ruin revs entirely. Yeah, there's just insane amount of money coming out. I, I remember one day when I was camping revs, after everyone knew that Scold was like three times as good GP per hour, basically, I had one day where I got three relics and two um, effigies in a day, which it, it was literally like I made... I made like 80 mil GP on my Iron Man. Raw GP, like 80 mil raw GP cool. within like we, six we hours. Absurd. That is completely absurd, yeah. And that's, like, not even on top of, like, the other supplies I got. It's just like, oh, my God, this place is just ruined. <laughs> it's just so busted. I definitely feel like Revs and old BH had a big impact on Ironman specifically for boosting and just boosting GP. Even Tom these days for, like, getting early stems and stuff. Not on the same level, but... Yeah, no, for sure. It's they a, they come out with little things scary. and, like... Yeah, I, I, know, know. I know it's not, like, don't cater to Ironman, but at the same time, don't, like, completely compromise the game mode, maybe. Would yeah. Be good. I I am very I eventually I want to get a PK or on here to like have him voices true. That I want to see from an, a PKer's perspective, you know, what really revives really wilderness it. besides just adding PVM bait. But like BH, I, I, I like BH can't be a thing. It just can't because it's going to be boosted. Like you can't have arbitrary if solve, rewards. If if you solve boosting, it works though. It works, but yeah. It, but you need an active revolves. team that's. You need an active team. Yeah, and that's not never going to happen because Jagex, like, they just... I mean, it could happen, but, like, they won't. Yeah, that, that, that's the dream is, like, active team, stop boosting, employ new measures to deal with it. Problem solved, ultimately. It, it's just getting to that stage is rough, and it doesn't look like they're ever going to make it happen. Yep, it's like those but, games... But they are looking at redoing BH, though, of it's, course, yet it's, again, so... It, it's sort of like those uh, first-person shooter games that are free to play. And they're just loaded with hackers. Like, it's just like yeah. not even fun. It could, there's no active team even banning the hackers. Like, all right, this game's gone to shit. Like, you literally should have just made this game cost 50 bucks just so that if you get banned for hacking, you have to like repay the 50 bucks, which nobody's going to do. It's like these free to play games. It's like, oh my God, they're just full of hackers. I remember playing this phone game and it just got to the point where it was just pointless to play it because it was just hackers like every every single person was a hacker whoever had the best hacks won it's just like such a headache yeah it's removes the fun entirely i've got a really interesting take on revitalizing the wildy as it stands what's that and the, the concept arrives from the original idea of the wilderness high risk high reward if you think about the wildy as it stands let's just take rev caves what are you truly risking if you go and kill them as it stands, literally nothing minus your like black dragon hide top and bottom. Maybe a couple of range pots and a stamp pot. We're talking less than 100k, right? To effectively kill revs. Yep. That's ultimately the issue. And and the bigger issue is how do you force people to risk? Um, because as soon as you risk something, always, now you have a reason to, to go there. To, G to earn GP by killing said people. That's, that's ultimately where this concept arises from, but... Firstly, Protect Item Pro is a terrible thing that never should have been coming into the game, I think. Because that takes away from the idea of, like, pl plus one-ing stuff removes the idea of risk in the first place. If you're plus one-ing your risk, what's the point? It's not actually risk. But, um... Here, here's, like, the concept that I came up with. It was Revs V2, or Revs V5 at this point, wherever it is. <laughs> Revs V5. You have a cave that in order to enter, you must be wearing a bracelet. You must be wearing these bracelets. And you can buy the bracelets for, uh, I don't know, 50k a pop from the guy outside. Safe area. As soon as you, as soon as you enter, you are sculled. <laughs> Which is just an, an immediate, like, funny, funny, just to annoy people. But also because now you risk. Um, inside of the Revenants, which drop pretty much the same stuff that Revenants drop now, I guess you could say. Maybe, like, different weapons or upgrades to the weapons or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but the rarity of these things scales really interestingly based on how much you charge your bracelet. And you would charge your bracelet with raw GP. Um, the more GP you put in, the higher chance you have of getting an item whenever you kill something. 
But it starts it starts that so if you charge your bracelet with like one GP, your bracelet is literally gonna give you like a drop every three years or something. You have to risk in order to get anything out of it. And if you put your bracelet to like fifty mil and you can actually put fifty mil in, you're guaranteed items really quickly. And then like next to your name or something, there's like a, you know, there's like a coin stack that rises as shows you like you know a bounty hunter, like shows you how much risk you have. I under okay, so So you're sort of being targeted. What do you think? Um, I just first single, the single first thing I think is mm -hmm. controlling worlds, clans, PvP clans making fuck tons of money, putting in max cash in their bracelets and controlling a world and just if it's singles though, that's true. Singles. How? how but I I understand you know if there's twenty people protecting one yeah. dude. No, that's that's true. That that's a good point if it's uh singles, but at the same time you can have clans that um. Like, I'm pretty sure you can still PJ in, uh, or it's not really like PJing, but okay, I need to, I need to study out what singles plus really means. Cause I'm still not a hundred percent positive. If a PKer attacks you, but you don't attack the PKer, can another PKer attack the PKer if it's attacking you, if, if they're not technically under attack and I think this they can, the I have no clue and I'm pretty sure they can. I know that, um, singles plus is a very good way. I think it's just. I think it's the best thing they've done to the wilderness. Like, I think like singles plus is great because you can't be fucked over by a team that's just going to constantly spear you and spec over and over and over and over and over when it's technically so, singles. So let's like put a hypothetical situation. You have one dude who's obviously risking who's risking fifty mil. Okay. And you've identified him via a scout or level three or whatever, which is fine in my opinion. Um, your scout's going to be risking that bracelet regardless. So if you really want to put a scout there, you're still going to get killed by level tens that come along. Haha. <laughs> But the, the, the one dude's farming revved with 50 mil risk. Like, guarantee risk. If you kill him, you get that money. Um, there's a team of 10 protecting him. Firstly, is it really worth it? That, that, like, that many people protecting? Maybe. But if you have a team of 10 who are in red gear that hop to that world all at one go and just left-click each of them one by one, they're all taken up. Doesn't matter what gear you're wearing. Again, they're risking 50k plus black dehyde. Like, rune crossbow ragging. And then your main PK hops in takes on the guy who's actually killing the rev. I, f I feel like organizing the counterparty to the protection party is way easier. Yeah. <clears throat> that I mean, you bring up a good, like, concept, but, um... Like, I just... I have to disagree. I think it's, uh... Like, I, it's just... It will be abused, like, especially... Well, first of all, singles plus as it is, like if you were to just do that right now to the rev caves as they are and not make like other extreme changes where it's like really fucking deep in the wilderness, maybe like level 60 wilderness where it's like legitimately you have to fight back for your life because you just, right you need like, you know, um, it, as it stands, it's like, it is, I've never died in the rev cave since the update and I've camped there for probably, you know, six hours, probably pk or encounter probably like 40 50 times and mm -hmm. good pkers you just it's so hard to die like it's pray, so pray hard melee, to die. pray melee tank gear yeah and not even that you can you just could. you can literally bring a zgs zgs the pker walk under him log out <laughs> no I'm, I'm not even kidding like you can just do that like you people don't understand how easy now it is to just evade pkers you can just you can bring your own freezes bring a little mystic set bring a freeze Bring yeah. one of those little oh, freeze sacks, freeze them, free, log out. Those freeze sacks are incredible. Yeah, just just log out afterwards. So they're they're really good. So like, okay, personally, I'm glad you brought up your point because I like hearing other people's ideas. Like I really do mm -hmm. because I, I want I want I I think PvP is great for the game. Like I really do. I think it's essential. But I don't think PV. And again, I I love to hear other people's perspective because my perspective is not right. It's it's just like. It's not a fact. It's just my own opinion. So I personally think any incentive to go out in the wilderness where people don't want to go out in the wilderness is just bad. Like, again, my opinion. And so mm. I think PvP, the PvP tournament Odeblock had, amazing. It was just good because these people are wanting to fight each other. Like, this is PvP. And I really like what you said earlier, where it's like make PvP more skill based, where it is just guaranteed hits, and where if you do better, you'd won, you know? Yeah. But so you're like, sort of firmly in the gang that is like, 
don't force me to fire yeah. the players. And like we think I back, and like we'll mm -hmm. think back, like we're like, okay, when we were a kid, like the wilderness is iconic, you know, where it's like this is an iconic place. But you think back in 2004, 2007 era where there was no wildy bosses, there was no chaos altar there was no black chin hunting there was nothing of that and the wilderness was still super active it's because like the people that went out there were wanting to be out there it wasn't like this horrible thing where it's like now pvp updates can't pass because people don't want them fucking killing them because they don't want to be out there in the first place it's like if there was no incentive for people that don't want to be out there like literally every pvp update would pass if it was just here you go like people that want to pvp here you go like I don't want to PvP, so I don't. I have no need to be out there. But the fact that the game is like progressed to the point where it's like best in slot methods for PVM and skilling now become in the wilderness. It just becomes this horrible thing where it divides the player base and like it. It's also a means for like real world trading and stuff and gold farming where yeah. things become you know high risk high reward. And it's just it's this mess where and again uh, my own opinions and what I've thought over the. This has just been like developing over like a few years because I have spent a lot. I have all wilderness pets, completed it's revs. Like three months going for a crawl is probably can't yeah. believe it. Yeah. And then I get all pets, yeah. But um, I know I always go on like a rant on this, but like it's just like I love PvP and I love that, but I hate prey versus or predator versus prey, where it's somebody that just does not even want to fucking be out there, but feels obligated to because there's something essential to another part of the game where they need to go out there for it. It's just bad. Yeah. I think that's fair. I'm not sure. I, I I'm not sure I fully agree, but I I kind of I get it. Yeah. No. I think I, I I think I'd happily be hunted if there was something I really wanted for it, and as long as there was a genuine risk on both sides. Yeah. And I uh, definitely yeah. understand. Like initially, when revs came out, risk versus reward. It's like, you know what? It it is pretty aids going out there, but you know that's well, it, that's it, where you're going to get great. the best reward. So I kind of it understand. It was really good on release because you had you were in this position where you actually have to bring more switches to get, to deal DPS to revs because there were so many people out there. Oh but yeah, you no, you I couldn't remember. kill them in time. Otherwise, an Iron Man couldn't even go yeah. out there. Like the before protection yeah. clans and stuff, it was just no Iron Man was. When I first went out there, there was no Iron Man out there. There was like four that I ever yeah. saw, and then they yeah, started I, becoming I, the protection <laughs> clan. There, there were there were people. There were like ten people with blowpipes in every world killing the dragon, and I would come up with an elder Mall and just hit a fifty like that's my kill. <laughs> <laughs> it, yep. it, it was fun in that it was fun in that sense because you could but it, it was also reliant on the amount of players that were there and it just yeah. isn't like that anymore for various reasons i'm really excited for them that, to come out with like the, uh that pking mini game ish or what was that like the faction wars i don't know if it's soul? Really PK. Soul? Oh, you, you mean stealing creation or no they're they've proposed like a, a faction war? wars it was like this it's not actually oh. coming out yet but they've propose like something similar to that where it's like it is pvp focused but it's like its own separate mini game and stuff tell, but tell you tell you one thing castle wars is the future i, I loved mean, it dude that's definitely one of the you used to do world. castle wars i don't know for how long but i remember those were like the coolest streams ever because i'm so intrigued by castle wars i'll never do it because i have no reason to but i'm so intrigued and i would love a super high level like just castle wars thing Why, stream i i have one thing to say about castle wars and when they bring it back because i think they will do it's been it's been pushed so hard now um they must not under any circumstances make it a profitable activity yep that is the only thing that i care about with regards to castle wars if you're putting a mini game and it is a mini game like that in um it needs to be just for fun i agree and that has to be stressed i don't care if they give you max gear while you go in like, I don't care if they boost your stats to 99 and give you all the gear you could ever want. Please don't make it such that you have, like, genuine rewards that you have to, to buy out and then sell, like, LMS. Do you think... If, 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 they, if they want to do that, make LMS, the, like, the money mini game. But, you know, keep Castle Wars the fun yeah. mini game. Or, you know, I, I just want to make that distinction for it. I think that's super important. Oh, 100%. I think that. Or else it's just going to be this weird boosted thing where you just pay for wins and just... Or, like... Yeah yeah you know what i, mean. I don't i don't it, it brings the it brings the idea of like boosting from bounty hunter yep. into castle wars and that's the very thing you want to avoid with you know what about clout based things like would you like if there was high scores like um i'm, a big, scores fan of, I'm a big fan of elo for things okay but as uh, but as has been pointed out 
the player base for PvP currently isn't big enough to support ELO with regards to matchmaking specifically. So, um, unless you set the threshold to be really big, or in, I think, this case for old school, infinite, such that your ELO does not affect your matchmaking, but is a representation of your rating only, that's fine, and that works. And something like Castle Wars ELO, that in no way affects matchmaking, go for it. Yep, totally fine. Um, and an, a, a, as an extension from that, having a custom... Well, maybe not a... Maybe, here's the thing, you can't even do custom lobbies with that kind of thing, because then you can abuse the ELO. But then you have to ask the question, if your ELO doesn't like change your matchmaking, does it really matter? It's one, True, it's one, yeah. of, those, it's one of those things where it, it has to affect your rating for it to matter. And if it doesn't affect your... Sorry, it has to affect your matchmaking for it to matter. And if it doesn't affect your matchmaking, does it matter? Well, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Sort of, it, if you're going to put it in, you have to have you have to matchmake with it, or it defeats the purpose of having it, because yeah. then it is really just for clout. Yeah. And you can generate clout in all sorts of ways by boosting again. And it's like, uh, it's 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 a rough one. What if they came and, out? And I don't. But but sorry. More importantly, on that you is get... like, even if you're doing that, you're that that in that in a sense is another form of of bounty hunter boosting. It's like the same thing. You're still boosting something, even if it's not for GP. Yeah. It's now now it's for your rating, and it's like. That's true. If you give if you give people something to care about. But you have to give something to care about, or else. Shouldn't the focus perhaps be more on like the idea that it is just genuinely fun? Yeah, but things are genuinely <laughs> fun when there's like competitiveness, and there's actually something to be like. Like there needs to be some sort of competitive. I don't know. I feel like, like we're really hitting on a problem here with old school as a whole, in terms of in terms of like moving towards better PvP stuff, and also perhaps the idea of so like I I really hate it when people talk about old school as like an esport. I hate it, and this is me coming from like an esports background specifically. Um, I did some research on this not too long ago. Guess where old school RuneScape ranks with regards to the amount of prize money generated. I have no idea. Probably pretty low. It is rank 100th exactly. Jeez. Guess what's 99th? Anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Minecraft is 99th. Gee. And guess what 80? Guess what 98 to number one is in terms of like the differences between those two games. No RNG. If yeah. Minecraft, one of the most successful games ever. Uh, not that it has like a big PvP scene, but even like Minecraft that has had had to build up their PvP PvP scene separately, a bit a bit like old school has, um, has like limited success in running tournaments and things like that. I don't see, however, like old school could ever really push its way in, unless they unless they force it to be non RNG again. So it's just it's just rough, like yeah. Now, what if they came out with like some um skill or like some some pvp like tournament mini game thing where it, it does it does what you say and it you do exactly the damage you're supposed to do every time missed yeah. prayers will always do that like do you think that would be like because because yeah, i understand your point like removing rng especially now that they're trying to pull um i'm tr i'm thinking of like uh the quest speed runs that they're pulling and they're they're going to come out. Um, yeah, I think that's this, a brilliant the, idea in the first place. Like this is this is totally like my biggest. This is my my biggest wish is that there is just a tournament world, or a game mode that you can select that allows you to do this. Because, I know I know like they have never actually left up a tournament world permanently, and much in the same reason as like while Trailblade as like leagues only yeah. last for a set period of time. If you make that something that's accessible and has everything on it why would you ever play the main game but i have to i have to point out that like is that a bad thing if they're still generating income for the game i mean yeah you don't want people to like move away from the main game entirely otherwise what's the point but it gives credibility to an esports scene if you have that average damage and it also gives credibility to a speedrun scene which is another big thing so I it's always like it's like where's the trade-off there? And it's a hard decision. 
I always have this kind of feeling about PvP where it's like <clears throat> there's a difference between, you know, a first person shooter and RuneScape where RuneScape is tick based and there are perfect ways to execute stuff. Like obviously there's mm -hmm. there's still like um, you know, the guessing factor of what you, what fakey is your is the person going to do and it's almost it if if there was two perfect pvpers going against each other it would literally come down to mind games basically of like right faking one, the other one, person out one ticking quick switches yeah and just game. doing but, crazy but, but, but like still player skill same yeah, yeah it would and it would have to do a lot with knowing that player you'd almost have to like have previously watched that player and see the fakes he does and the mind games he'll do and like yeah so but i think what is Okay, so this is kind of an issue, and I've heard of other people. I don't, I don't know how big of an issue it is, but what is the issue with people that use bots and PvP bots and like these auto switch, perfect, you know, eight switch to barrage bots? Like, can anything be done about that? Like, I know if there was actual tournaments, there's just can be anti cheat, and you know, you can just ban them. But like, if oh. it was just in the game, can that ever really be taken out? Like, with so much. I don't know. I just think of that because I, I know PvP can be fun, but I've seen clips. You know, I'll go on Twitter and I'll see some PK yeah. or streamer that's like, this guy's clearly botting. Like, it, it, like he's just H, just instant HK. Yeah, barrage. It's like, are you are you meant to be able to? You, you win the fight if you want yeah. to win the fight. And, and I've played LMS this, where there's respect, people. Respect. Yeah, there's just people doing eight way switches, and it's just like, uh, dude, I can't do anything about this, and there's nothing that can be done because it's just. It's a byproduct of an outdated engine and a detection system, ultimately. I don't think this will ever affect big tournaments and it, yeah, big tournaments events. will be fine. They'll they'll have their anti. And, I, and I think I think it, I think it's a genuinely small amount of players that like survive more than a day or two using those things. They gen I think they just get banned. I hope generally. I hope that's the case. I'm hopeful that that, I, that is. I, 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 I'm just... things, I feel like those things are too obvious to to pass up generally. I just uh, get that, that, that and the community is quite good at sending in tip-offs or reports or that thing. Yeah. So they, they, you know they exist for the day that someone wants to mess around and then they lose the account, buy a new one, whatever it is. I don't think that's too much of an issue though. I think that's generally. That's good. I I just coming. don't know. I've just heard so. I guess it's like you always see the negative things happen. You see more than like the actual like. Yeah. It's just like the news. You always see the negative stuff going on in life. You don't actually see any of like the positive things because that's not newsworthy. So it's like, yeah, I was just curious on that because I know, uh, like, you, can, you can't really do that in other... I mean, you can do that in other games. You can obviously just hack and stuff, but it's like, I feel like RuneScape, especially if there's no tournament, it's just somebody can just fucking cheat in the wilderness. Somebody can go out in the wilderness and do eight eight way switches and stuff instantly it's, a, it's it's the only factor is the risk for them for their account right and yeah. the amount of gp on the account that's the only factor and if they're not detected or reported or noticed yeah. gets away and there's nothing you can do about it well beyond set beyond sending the report if they kill you but hey so in, um, my, in, my, in my experience though tip-offs do work I have I, I've tipped off my fair share of specifically scout bottles at chambers, and they've been running for like months and get banned within a couple of days. So that's good. That's good to know. I always just report yeah. people that are spamming at whenever I the occasional time I go to the G to decant my potions, I see like eight people spamming. Yeah, trade me or I'm buying a D clause for a hundred mil. Like wow, oh my god, some level three account that are saying all these items they're buying like twenty percent over the value or whatever. So yeah. many scams nowadays. Um, I'm going to actually take a quick pee. So we'll just take a little break real quick for like a sure. minute and a half. And then we'll get back to it. All right. So I'm just going to keep it recording, but I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Are you? Yep. I promised I behaved. <laughs> All right. Um. I do want to take. <laughs> We've been going for like an hour and fifty. We haven't even touched the Twitter topic. So <laughs> let's at least. I'm gonna touch on one Wait. that I'm actually. Wait. Yeah. Let's smash out. Yeah, go go for one. Let's we should smash out a couple of them. Because, All right, let's do this. So I don't know, we're, we're both rent, which is great. I want to hear about this. Describe this one comes from Nibla Nos. Describe the feeling after finishing the hundred man CM raid, the True. deathless hundred man. To, to give to give some backstory then, because it's relevant here. This project. Oh man, I, I don't have the dates with me, but this project was started. Oh, nearly a year ago now. I want to say it might even be over a year at this point. And it stemmed initially from the idea of the DLM in We Do Raids. So We Do Raids is the, you know, 60k big man discord for finding raid groups, raids 1, raids 2. And every Sunday, since the dawn of time, since We Do Raids began, sort of, a, a DLM was held, which is a double loot mass. So ever since people realized that they could run masses with big people, big amounts of people, and get a lot of points, we realized that eventually you reach loot caps. And once you reach a loot cap, it passes to the next one, and then the next one, and you have consecutive amounts of, uh, of of chances of getting this loot roll as long as you had enough points for it. So the double loot mass was all about let's get sixty people together, roughly, run run these gigantic masses, and try and get two loot rolls, which is rare, and at the time it was really cool. And then as double loots became more consistent, and even some triple loots came up here and there. Um, it just became kind of the norm. Like, let's just do this double loot mess on Sundays, every, every Sunday. It's great. It's always a really fun event. I uh, used to stream them all the time. Not so much these days, especially because Trailblazers on. But hopefully going to get back to them at some point. And anyway, uh, conversation between friends and, and the people running eventually led to the idea that what if we had a better DLM? Like, it's one of the things in the game that was just sort of just taken for granted that you could do. But not really, there wasn't really anything where people had like tested the limits, like how many people can we put in a raid and actually make it succeed? Because, of course, there's a few things to think about here. Like, there's no parameters for like what's actually a good big raid, how many points you get. Um, no one's trying to push the limits because it seems like it's silly, because we already knew from experience you put even 50 people together in a mass, and with even slightly bad calling, everyone's on fire because Ulm burns you and yep. you spread it and then you know you, you, you've you seen the pictures where it's like oh. burn with me burn with me burn with me just <laughs> consistently and there are times where on my twitter i'm posting every sunday it's like hope everyone's having a good sunday and it's just a picture of the entire raid burning like three weeks in a row does that ever um, end by the way the burn if, if... yeah so o o over time like uh uh Hayo, kelpie i think nox even ran a few i've run a, i've run one or two but especially um high and kelp they they determined methods to like separate people effectively and the, the, the unfortunately one of the methods is of course just screaming your head off in a controlled manner like stand still you must stand still you must put up redemption you will not move you will tank crystals do not attack <laughs> and it works it absolutely works yeah no no I'm, i was just curious and because it, i don't i don't fully know. know the mechanics but does the burn ever actually wear off if people just kept doing what they were doing? It, or... it lasts for 30 ticks, I think. So it's like, it's like six And then as soon as you're damage. burned again, though, it'll just keep going, right? Yeah. Like, it'll just never yeah. end. So, so if you're standing next to somebody and you burn tick or they burn tick, it'll pass between you and reburn you for that entire duration. So the only way to get rid of it is to separate entirely. Jeez. So you're never standing next to someone. And you can make this happen. It just takes a, lot a bit of, of time. And, and then... Coordination. And then as sets of, as little groups within the big group stop burning, you push them to one side of the room and just say, go over there, don't move, stand in a clump on that side of the room. <laughs> so you have this like burning section and you slowly filter them out and then, it, you know, it, it eventually, eventually works and gets under control. But of course, in that time, you've taken so much damage from all. It's like, you know, I, it's, it's not fun. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. We, we've had, we've had raids where you have like triple loot potential, 1.2 million, 1.3 million points. Bang. 200k 300k in this in this in the span of like one phase at final at, at head phase and of course it, it's worth it's worth noting that all at these scales 60 people hits around 65 damage i think for a regular rate that's a lot of damage right like the, the, most people expecting to go into a, a, a trio raid a standard trio raid for comparison you get about 60k points 65k points uh which is like one twelfth to one thirteenth chance of loot or something like that maybe like one fifteenth or something yeah and you're never gonna die in a tree if you know what you're doing because you're never gonna take more than a 30 from all 
in addition to any of the, the attacks that can occur, it really can't kill you if you just brew up. Um, but as you know, as you scale, every time you every time you reach a phase, increase it on. Fight draws on, more phases, more burn, more problems, more mistakes. Um, and of course, the max hit scales. Mod Arcane uh, a couple of months ago gave us the figures on how Ulm scales, and there's some really cool factors that go into it, like. For every phase that all increases, like so, if, so for every eight people in the room, you get another phase up to a total of nine phases. Each phase adds a max hit or like more damage. In addition, uh, every time the melee hand dies, Olm starts his head starts glowing, and this is also true for head phase. And it's like there's just more damage getting piled on each phase, um, and it scales awfully with the amount of players. So eventually, when we got round to hosting one of the first ever 100 man masses, which was just a fun thing. By no means was this something where we were trying to test the limits or anything. It was just like, let's purely do this for fun. 100 people in a raid. Guess the amount, guess the amount of deaths that are, oh, actually, this was, this was, I think, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it was a 100 man CM just to like test the waters, like just go crazy on it. Guess how many deaths occurred. I think I have the number right. I, I can't even guess. I'm going to guess like. 300 and everyone died over the course of the entire raid 100 people roughly uh double it and add more keep going uh 500 deaths double it and add more keep going jesus christ uh 1500 close uh 1700 I'm pretty jeez sure. so bad so each, each how many points well, average... it was just it was zero right like it's... zero points each player died an average of 17 times that's fucked yeah, I, I, it was nice. it was either thirteen it was either thirteen hundred or seventeen hundred. And these are raiders too. These aren't just level well, fifty well, no, accounts, they, right? They're... They they were people suiciding rooms to complete them. Yeah, yeah, was, but everyone kind of knew what raids yeah, were. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't just a bunch of noobs. It, it, it wasn't a bunch of complete noobs. It was people actually trying to complete the raid. It was That's just like insane. vanguards would one shot you. You go and a ranger just shoots boulders at five people dead. It it was it was silly in a really fun way. Um, but that was like that was like our first taste of. Hey, this is what a ridiculously like. This is what like the biggest kind of raid scale does to you. And um, there's a, there's a clip called the uh, the nuke or the nukadial. Mutadial takes out thirty people in one chomp. <laughs> Just bang, everyone dead. Uh, <laughs> a glorious, a glorious clip. What does it hit? Uh, what what's its max? I, what's Mutadile's max stomp? Over over two fifty. Tecton max is two fifty one, I think. If you pray melee, what would it? Does Insta it change? Killed. Kills you. Jeez. It, it's 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 two fifty without prayer, so you just you jeez. Can. So it's so literally hundred damage. Yeah, imagine going into the first room in 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 a hundred man CM. Pray melee one twenty one angler dead. It's, <laughs> it's it's just like how do you? This was this was eventually one of the problems we had to come up with for the hundred man CM because that was the whole point. And I've been sidetracked a bit here, but like the idea of what we en ended up deciding on a goal was like, let's start stretching the idea of DLMs to make them better because we have ways to control the flame and stuff at all now. So we we have ways to we have ways to control the raid. We have ways to control each room. Let's see how far we can push it, right? And then we get to a position where it's like, okay, we can do sixty man raids effectively and keep everyone alive throughout the raid. So we're like, okay, let's do a 60 man on a 5C, 3P, longest raid rotation, see how many points we get. And I can go into the Discord and have a look at some of the stuff. So let me have a look. We have, um, where is it? We have a goals section here. And one of the first point PBs that we broke in the Mega Scale Discord, this, this was once we had started to like go for points specifically. Looks like this was. Yeah, two point three million points, and I can see. I'll send you the screenshot actually for this one. Yeah, this was like that's roughly the amount of people in the raid plus a bit. So this was probably like an eighty man at this point, and this was the first time anyone had broken two million points in a raid. So you can already see we we devised some roles and um, specific tank roles and stuff like that, and this was all in this is all in the way of just surviving on. Um, even things like optimizing so, for example, the Melias, Mages, and Rangers had to be separate. And the reason for this is because if you didn't have the separate roles and you all had the same bits of gear on uh, with all three styles, you, you run out of brews. For example, 
So there's some really cool optimization there with regards to sort of like playing the game properly, having tank rolls, melee rolls, mage rolls, range rolls in that sense. Wow. Um, but mo moving on from that, once we had figured out like, hey, we can actually do like 80 man rakes, we can push 100 man, we started pushing 100 mans. That got completed fairly quickly. Olm was only hitting about 70s, I think. And still nothing in, nothing in the level that would actually max hit you. And we could choose 5C, five, five 3P runes where everything was tankable or survivable. Um, because, you know, even like, even, uh, you know, you, you could avoid all the, all the troublesome runes. You can safe spot shamans with a shaman tank. So, mystics can be done one at a time. Um... I'm trying to think of all like the regular rooms that you so like you you would emit stuff like mutadile. You wouldn't do tecton. You wouldn't do vasa. You didn't have to. You didn't didn't have to touch them. And if you did, there were ways to con, to control it for the regulars. So getting onto the getting onto the hundred man CM stuff. Once we'd done the hundred man regular without deaths, we're like, now we have an ultimate goal. Hundred man CM, maximum point cap, without dying, and it's just like. That's the absolute. That's the absolute furthest you could ever push the idea of doing large scaled raids. You've capped it out. You're gonna go for capped points as well. So like overload caps, food caps. Uh, no deaths also means no 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 points lost on death. And then of course no deaths. So it's just like it's it's the perfect raid essentially, right? When it comes to high scales. Um. Oh boy, well, there were some problems with this though. Even starting at 40 <laughs> to 50 man CM scaling. The first thing we noticed was, of course, we have to include every room. And it starts with Tecton. And it's like, how do you actually get past Tecton? <laughs> when he decides that he can eventually... He, yeah, like, you, it, it, it changes dramatically from just having, like, oh, it's crabs and tightrope and mystics and shamans. Yep. And, you know, even Vespula, which is, like, doable with the old method, which was a thing and still is. And now it's like three things come up that are just deadly. For even even more than that, but like Ice Demon can now one shot anybody, with the exception of someone wearing just this here in tank armor, praying range. Um Vanguards can now one shot anybody. Tekton can one shot anybody through their prayer. Um, <laughs> we have people dying to scavs in the real attempts. <laughs> uh so far. Shot one of our shaman tanks got killed for like a 93 or like an 80 an 85 or something like that. Oh my god. With a with melee prayer up, just melee, just bang, dead. Um <laughs> wait, wait wait, he had melee prayer up even and he, he still he probably he, he probably had ranged prayer, but we reckon he could have yeah. hit regardless. Shit. And it's just like how are you meant to do this when every single NPC from like the major rooms can actually one shot you? Um, thank goodness things like Vespula didn't scale, or that room may have been impossible. And then, e even Rope Rangers. Rope Rangers, at one point, were hitting 65 through max range defense, just this year, with Bulwark. Jeez. That is, that is like a 40% decrease in damage, on top of range prey. Those guys were hitting like 250s as well. Um, tankable, only just. Uh, and then there's Vasa, which was so, so like of of the of the really big rooms that caused issues, Tecton, um, Vasa, Mutadiles, and to run through like all of the unique solutions, I'll try and quick fire these because I could talk about Mega Scale for probably just a week. Tecton, <laughs> we had some really cool and ingenious methods for this. The first, the first was something that I came up with, which was well, actually no, the first was like, what if we just all flinch it? What if our main DPS unit of like 30 people goes in and flinches it perfectly? And we soon figured out that like, yeah, you could do this if you're solo or like three people, but you can't scale that because player error, right? Yeah. So then we moved to the idea of, well, I, I, I take credit for this one and I still to this day love the idea. Uh, Salamanders. Tecton can't hit you on corners. He can only hit on the four squares on either side of him. Salamanders can hit horizontally even with melee. So what if you what if you have one guy flinching Tecton correctly, who uses trustworthy and experience, and everyone else comes into the corner of Tecton and hits him from there? Because Tecton doesn't recognize someone who's on the side. He only recognizes on like sorry, he doesn't recognize diagonals. Yeah. He only recognizes like in front. Um, I'll send you some of this footage of stuff later if you want to have a look at it and yeah, put some of it. But 
there's there's a great video that I made about salamandering tecton in a CM. In and fact, we do, we, uh, in fact if you if you want to bring it up, I can literally I'm I'm showing some of the stuff you've been linking me on the on the yeah, recording. Just 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 type in salamander tecton to Google, first thing, and take and just take a little look. Uh, let me know when you let me know when you've had a run through. I think audio is a bit scuffed. But this was this was like a proof of concept, didn't we? I'm gonna show it. Now. I'm super proud of this one. <laughs> Forty-two. This is a challenge mode tech time. Forty is the Sally's pie. This is a good idea. I. I... I want to test something as well with my Shelly. I have been waiting to attack when you guys are, but what if some 46. dumb person attacks it immediately? Uh, I wonder if no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And you all have to leave, basically, right? Because of the meteors. Sure. Meteors, yeah. yeah. Alright, that's very good. So the only damage anyone took this, the only, the only damage anyone ever took was the uh, flame damage, which is of course manageable. Yeah. Jesus, the big brain. So this is like an adjusted CM lure that people were using for CM speeds. Nice. We have high at the top flinching him, which is like which is like the control. And then Tecton can't see us, so he won't turn to the majority of players. What does a salamander even? I've never used a salamander in my life. So a salamander has three attack styles, and it's melee range and magic. It actually does all three, and you can swap between them. But the benefit, like as we know, with all with all NPCs and with all, with all things where you can both range and melee, including NPCs that do that, they can melee you on corners. So much like the reverse for players, you can melee on corners. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, is it accurate? It, like, is is it decently like... It is It is slash-based, and because of all the Warhammers and BGSs that we had on Tecton, it was like 98% accurate or something. Wow. And it was dealing like 40s. Wow. That was a one, that was a one anvil challenge mode Tecton done with Salamanders. Jesus. And that was without any mistakes either. On like first, we, we did many attempts. This was just the first time we tried it. Um, and we actually never ended up using this method despite it being really unique and really interesting and really cool. Because at some point, and I, I regrettably denied the idea flat outright for a few reasons, but someone brought up the idea of what if we just arc light everything? What if we just corp it? So, we, <laughs> and this became one of the best things ever because it turns out you can actually just corp stuff in raids. You can just trick in it, which was the idea of like, <laughs> yeah. you will you, you yeah. have a BGS than Arclight. And it removes the melee stats entirely. Yep. Or, or you know, well, pretty much all stats if you do it correctly and have enough stacks of war, uh, and have enough stacks of spec. And unlike corp where you might run in solo over the course of 10 minutes and spec it down, with, a, with 80 people or like, you know, 60 people DPSing, 60 specs gone, it's going to be zero stats. So we ended up eventually moving off to do Arclight stuff. And I, I initially I thought this wouldn't work because on Guardians in mass raids, people used to BGS spec and Warhammer them all the time, and they they always hit people. So I was always thinking like their stats remained. Reality is we probably just never hit enough on them, and I was misled by that. But and their stats like regen pretty quickly, correct? Uh, or is that not right? I've just heard not, that stats not regen. that fast. Okay, not that fast. Some things in raids too, but not that fast. No. So. Chickening or corpse specking stuff down became the meta for a few rooms. Uh, Tecton was the primary, and that got us past room one. Uh, this also worked for other rooms, but some of them we didn't use till later. So let me let me go through in challenge mode order like each room. I'm trying I try and quick fire this still, though it's just there's some really interesting stuff I want to linger on. Crabs is just crabs. You just yeah. do crabs. You it's just what do you on. what do you have like four people in there doing it? Everyone yeah. else just stays out. Yeah, more or less. We, well, actually, there's some cool stuff where if you go into that room, there's like 50 crabs. <laughs> and you all have to like separate to grab them. It's it's kind of crazy, but really fun to see. Um, but yeah, crabs is crabs. Scabs is scabs. You have scab teams. You have prep teams, of course. Just pray. Uh, <laughs> Ice Demon was one of those things where you have to get like four, three to four inventories of kindling each just to make the thing light properly. And our method for this was pretty simple and also incredibly scary uh everyone would stack up in the west corner of the room and one person would run back and forwards tanking hits not tanking but dodging hits drawing the aggro because i Steven can't see that far left um and this was like the start of where things got bonker because if one person misclicked ice demon 
and they drag out, the entire stack of 50 people gets ice barraged and all die. Jeez. And it's one of those things that was like a, a consistent problem throughout Mega Scale is that one at any click. point in time, one misclick ruins the run. Yep. And when you're going for a zero death, you can't afford that. So we had multiple layers of security, as it were. Most importantly, like reminding players, don't touch your mouse until it's dead. <laughs> don't even pot up your prayer. Don't do anything. Just sit back and watch it. Because Ice Demon in a normal raid is like, what, 20, 30 seconds? Yeah. Five minutes in mega scale. Jesus. <laughs> and this, this, is, this is with 20 fire surges with harm in Max Mage. This is with the rest of the team T-bowing it or AC-being it with rubies and stuff. And it's just like... It, it, how much once, HP once... does it have? I know Ice Demon's kind of like already kind of weird. It's it's not as much as you think, but the scaling on the magic defense and the HP uh, yeah, yeah. and the uh, the regular defense is like absurd. And we could not. I actually wanted to warhammer it. I was I was in, I was in favor of warhammering him. The rest of the team was like, nah, we don't want to risk it's it. It's not even worth it. Yeah. Um, I still stand by the idea that we could have easily had like a spec team of three or four people who were trustworthy warhammering it. But yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, it'll happen. Just takes a little bit more time. But uh, it's the point is it was a solvable room and quite easy to get through. Shamans comes up. For shamans, we had um, a completely new method of safe spotting. Uh, normally, a shaman tank goes in, draws aggro, brings them to a corner, or safe spots them. The rest of the team comes in and shoots them. Works fine. Mega scale doesn't quite work like that because when you're luring those shamans, first of all, there's five of them, and each of them has sixteen thousand health. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever one of these guys melees you, you die. Which we found out pretty quickly for some of our shaman tanks. So the new method was to go in... Uh, essentially, because the fight was so drawn out because of the HP of the shaman, the shaman tank would have to stay there for so long he would run out of supplies. And or get chanced at some point. So the method was to have the shaman tank temporarily go in, drag them to one corner, Hold them there temporarily for 20 seconds or so. The entire team enters, goes to the east side of the room. The shaman tank now draws all the shamans back out of the room. So they're all looking at him while he's outside the room. And then one player from the team that is already in the room goes around the back of the shaman and tags one of them off. So you have four stuck on the entrance door. Just staring at one... the actual person that left. <laughs> your entire team is already in the room and one shaman is now being safe spotted at a time. That's as genius. it gets dragged off. And that was a really cool thing to see in practice. We got some amazing footage of that one. And that solved shamans, because it was just one one at a time. No no danger, essentially, yep. minus the initial setup. Uh, prep is prep. And then we were into Vanguard room, which was the second floor. Oh boy, Vanguard's gave us some issues. This was... Can I point out, this is all to explain like the feeling of completing Mega Scale. We're still on like explaining room things. Um, Vanguard's was a problem. And credit here to Skeletoon, who spent many, many hours, not just on Vanguards, a lot of the stuff. He was part of what we called the Raidologist team. And the Raidologist was just like a group of 10, 15 people who were all like really invested in figuring out mechanics for make Mega Scale work and all that. But he specifically spent a lot of time on Vanguards to determine uh, consistent safe spots and how Vanguards worked with regards to aggro. Um, it came down to quite simply having one tank stand next to the vanguard on the northern side and then your entire team would slowly walk into the room chill next to that like top right area and just long range it until it was until it was uh dead and the tank would never move the team would never move this was like ice demon on steroids where anyone misclick means people die and it happened three four times where someone would just walk out <laughs> uh, there was even a time where someone would decide to attack the south vanguard and it would just it would run towards people Jeez. It got to a point where I would start bringing Justicia with me as a switch to Vanguards, just in case it got on me. And it saved me one time. I got slapped by a melee with Justion, hit me like 50. Would have died without it. It's it's just one of those little silly things that ended up working. Uh, but we even had double, we, we had double tank rotations, so when one tank ran out of supplies, you switch them over during a Vanguard intermission. Stuff like that. It's just really, really cool again and worked wonders. But Vanguard's was essentially a safe spot and solve room. Extremely slow 15 minute room. But it worked. Thieving is thieving. Except when people decide to drink Overload at 51 HP and open a poison chest. <laughs> Didn't actually happen. But it was a genuine concern in yeah. the later runs. Because there were people... We, we got bored doing thieving because this was the point where we capped our points. Um, 
for overloads and food. Well, overloads specifically. There would be a 40 minute period, 30 to 40 minutes, where we just sip overloads and do nothing else. Jeez. And we got bored, so we made conga lines and stuff. So I, I, there's a point where like, I have a clip of me just drawing 60 people in a massive conga line through the thieving room. And someone opens a poison chest next to me and it just hits like six people. They're like, okay, we need to not do this. <laughs> we need to actually be careful with poison because yeah. it's threes and if people have three HP, they die. Even, even you would think like the most benign room posed like this genuine lethal threat that cost... At the, and I have to say, at this point in the raid, it was like going on two hours. Jeez. Like one and, a half, one and a half hours or something just to get to thieving in a CM. Uh, next comes Vespula. Vespula is actually quite straightforward. You just do the old method. It's just really slow because it's got so much HP. You do the old method where everyone shoots Vespula, it goes down, you hit the portal, comes back up, rinse, repeat. Simple. Um, rope. Rope again was like one at a time. Be really careful. Let the tanks tank whenever they attack, and then you can shoot it. That was fine as well. Um, How much did the Rangers use... hit if you had a tank with a prey range on? So 65, I think, was the highest I remember. And without, probably like 100-something. Well, double that, right? So 130. Jesus. And then apply the just this year 40% reduction. Jeez. <laughs> Over 150. So those guys are really scary. And we would have, at, at every stage in the raid, for the tanks specifically, there were heal other alt accounts or heal other main accounts that would, that would just be on standby to heal other in case their HP dropped too low. Um... Anyway, ropes, rope, kill everything, safe spot one at a time. Gary again, but in, in control, which is important. And then we're on to the final floor before all, which was cons consisting of uh, Guardians into Vasa, Mystics, then Mutadile. This floor posed issues. Uh, Guardians was actually simple. You just trick him them. Corp thing. You just spec him down. Harmless. You can stand next to them. It's great fun. Vasa. Oh boy. Uh, Vasa is... Oh, I remember Vasa, seeing the video you uploaded. Like, right when Vasa, you uploaded, I watched it. Vasa in fact, I'm going to pull that up. There, there, there's a few videos of Vasa. One is the... Actually, one's pretty long. That's true. And it what, has one's, like, one, one's like a tutorial to like do Vasa as from the perspective of, of a DPSer. And that's not actually something we, en we ended up doing. That, that was our original method. And it relied on the idea that Vasa shoots out three bowlers. And you can have three tanks in position such that Vasa will only target those three tanks. It sort of targets the east side first, and then it targets everywhere else. So if your team stands on the west side, the tanks can take the boulders. And in theory, it worked great. And there are times where you could have the entire team just chilling on one tile, like 40 people, and the tanks would just move in unison together, taking these hits, dodging them. Um, completely fine. And then Vasa decides to be a bitch, and whenever it teleported everyone, it would always target one specific tile to the northeast of itself, and it would never target the tanks together. And it would kill people, because each of those boulders hits up to 90 damage. 270 damage stack. What are you going to do? You can pray range and still die. Um, that's in addition to being hit for your HP with um, the Vasa bomb. So that method eventually became kind of unusable, unfortunately, even though in theory it worked fine, because the coding is a bit jank. Yeah. Oh, is that, is, that not, is that video not even on your YouTube anymore? I deleted it, I think. Because it's just, because yeah, I think I don't, it, I don't it, even It just it. didn't work. It, just, yeah. it, it Sound theory, jank coding. And then we ended up with uh, chickening it once again. So this, this ended up working for Tekton, for um, Guardians, and now it works for Farsa. But the, but the interesting thing with this is it wasn't it wasn't just something where you go in and trick and, and hit it at the same time. You have to stack your hits because the defense regens so quickly whenever Vas is on a crystal. So our plan was to wait for it to come to the northeast the northeast crystal. When it gets there, so we we start the room. Someone lo someone uh, logs out, logs back in. No death, no uh, points preserved. The Vasa room started. Vasa goes to a random crystal. If it's not the right one, we just wait it out. Eventually, it goes to the northeast one. The entire team enters at this point in time, and then you have two literal banner men. One of them is for the Warhammers, one is for the BGSs. You don't need arc lights for Vasa, do you? It's only, it's only range reduction, right? Yeah. So you have Warhammers stacked up following one banner man, BGSs stacked up following the other banner man. Everyone's got their runoff. The banner man for the BGSs 
follows the Bannerman for the Warhammer, so he's one tick behind. And then once you start moving towards Vasa, so like the main the main Warhammer Bannerman starts walking forwards, everyone clicks Vasa at some point. And because you're all walking, you all attack Warhammers into BGSs directly. And that reduces the chance of Vasa healing defense in that period of time. And also stacks the hits perfectly. Uh, it's it's way cooler to see in practice. I'm sure we'll get some footage of this. And it sort of just completely made the room zero damage. Vasa was hitting like ones to threes at most. Um, and it was just super fun to watch because out of all the reactions to Mega Scale, especially, well, maybe not the ending, but to all, like any given room, the first time we completed 100 man Vasa got the biggest kind of like reaction from the team. It was That's just. Awesome. It was a crazy, crazy moment. Uh, the famous God has bled clip may have come from that. <laughs> and it's just, it's like, we must have been f five months plus in at this point, And like a month stuck at Vasa. Weekend after, because we only ran on Saturdays. Uh, yeah, Saturdays. So we had like two attempts per week. And each of these attempts would get shut down because Vasa would keep hurling a boulder towards its northeast side on teleports. Jeez. So passing the, it was just amazing. And the moment to be able to actually get through that, I don't know. It's pretty indescribable. Because we knew that at that point, we actually don't have much left for Arm. And, and we're like, we can do one because we did Arm in 100, man, right? So Mystics is fine. It's safe spotable. One tank aggroes at a time. Kill Mystic, no problem. There was a really funny moment where at one point, the team was luring Mystics badly. And I went AFK to get a cup of tea. And there's a really, really, really funny clip of me just standing still while the entire team backs off slowly as this mystic runs towards us. He turns towards me, throws a 93 or an 83 at me, I want to say. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like, ah, oh, okay. Because I'm still AFK at this point. I come back, I look at the screen. As the, In the process, as he's throwing the second hit, splashes on me. Jeez. <laughs> two, and, two and a half hours of our time saved because a mystic hit like a 3% splash roll on me. <laughs> Feels very good. Um, needless to say, I ate food a lot. 14 different people come forwards to try and aggro the Mystic off me, and two people heal other me at the same time. It was That's good. Awesome. Good teamwork. Um, good teamwork. Probably the, probably the closest I've come to ruining one of the raids, and hopefully, uh, well, luckily it didn't happen any other time, so I got away with that quite well. But yeah, other than Mystics, Mutadars was last. This was actually another chickening, chickening room, um, but this, this went through a couple of variations. So much like the Tecton and the Vasa strats, we had a few ideas, and one of the most interesting ideas that, that was initially proposed was, let's kill it by tick eating it slowly. <laughs> and when you consider how much HP it has, it's kind of a bit silly. So we thought, what if we spec it down while tick eating it carefully? So, in theory, it actually works. As long as the Mutadile is in a specific place, you can go in, you can spec it down, and you can leave while tick eating. It's just really difficult to get the to get the timing right. <coughs> and for a couple of days, we thought this was the best method, purely because nothing else seemed to be viable. Um, but at one point, someone went into the room, or some, you know, testing was done on this, and they dropped the aggro of the mutadal and maintained the aggro. Which was kind of a weird thing, because generally when you go into a room like that, the NPC will attack you, you leave the room, and it will just wander around. But in this but in this specific case, if you go into a room and you gain line of sight of that NPC, and then you move out so it does not attack you, it will maintain its aggro forever. Wow. So we had the ability to we had the ability to trap a mutadile on the door and keep him there, aggroed on someone outside the room. So anyone could enter the room and not be affected in any way. And from then it was just a process of understanding how we can group up players in order to spec it down effectively. Now here's the catch. Whenever you, whenever someone damages that mutadile, it will now aggro on them. <laughs> so now we're left in a position where we have one aggro who is outside the room, a Ag uh, and uh, someone to who is going to aggro, who is standing on one side of the mutadal, and a team of twenty who are on the other side. That person who is going to aggro hits the mutadal first, and now you have a ten tick window to spec it down on anyone else before it will re-aggro. 
And as long as that person does not get attacked by Mutadala and leaves instantaneously through the tendrils, he will now maintain aggro. So you could swap aggro, which was really cool. Dang. So big brain that was the strats. process. That was the process for the big and the small, where we would we would grab aggro, one person goes in, the rest of the team goes in, that one dude grabs aggro, everyone else specs, everyone leaves. Someone goes in, checks the stats, rinse, repeat until it's zero. And of course the byproduct of this is that we have some really cool footage of small and large mutadile getting absolutely massacred by 40, 50 people just chilling there, not praying anything, getting repeatedly chomped for zeros. That's awesome. Um, that was a really fun one because every single time it was super scary, but every single time it was super satisfying as well. And then of course, uh, oh, once we, once we were able to do the rooms and we had the methods sorted, it was like a consistency thing where we'd get back most weeks to Ulm with Deathless. And then Ulm is like... Um, one thing would go wrong. One person just doesn't need enough. Well, we'd underestimated it in, in, in reality because we've been so focused on the room problems that we hadn't really solved the Ulm problem. And of course, if you're putting in... there, We actually, for, for the 100 man raids, we only ever had about 25 people in the room. 20 to 25. This is re to reduce player error and keep things a little bit simpler. And also because other, other people had alting roles and stuff like that. But yeah. Of course, when, when you consider how long an ult takes, which is like nearly 45 minutes or something, that many players in a room, that many clicks, you're going to make a mistake. And every single time, players kept making one error that ended up killing the team. And of course, if you think about all max hits and how they scale with phases and CM... Yeah, Ulm can one-shot you, just instantaneously. From any HP that you are in the room, you can die. No matter what you're praying, where you're standing, what you're doing, <laughs> you can just die. And that kind of became a problem, because Ulm had never been in that position before. For the 60, 70, 80 man regulars, 100 man regular, 60 man CM, 70 man CM, wasn't a problem. Ulm can't kill you. He can't just kill you when he wants to. And then we have clips from the 100 man like actual attempts, we run in. Someone is late to spec the Ulm hand. They die. The raid is over. Jeez. And this is like the most demoralizing thing because it's week after week, three hours to get there, two seconds to fail. Um, and I'm not going to go into all the Ulm stuff because that's another like hour and a half of just explaining roles and, and specifics, but... I remember watching a lot of in, the Ulm things on stream. In, yeah. In the end, what it came down to was like a genuine training camp for consistency. You, you, the whole the whole idea is like you, you're in a race against time for someone to make a mistake. So by reducing the chance of making those mistakes through a series of practice sessions and confirming people like actually want to be on the team and are dedicated to it, signing them off as like you are accepted into the <laughs> into the mega scale on because you've been to three practice arms and have performed well. That was that was the only way we had to actually improve that consistency level and in the end it was like you need to actually build up good players and build up good consistency you can't just tackle this with any random team of really good players and we had some good player checks we had like you must have max combat stats you must have max gear you must have 500 raids casey you must have cm experience you must have mass experience uh you must have infernal cape even even infernal cape wreck at one point and it was just like none of this is helping so it was it was really really cool to see the idea that doesn't matter how good the player base is, you have to train people specifically to get good. That was a really cool idea. And ultimately it ended up paying off. Uh, a few weeks after those training sessions, one of the arms successful. So, but uh, to answer the question that was at the very start, like what was the feeling of completing those raids? Honestly, by the end of it, it was just relief. It was a genuine feeling of just it's overwhelming, over. overwhelming relief. Um, from experience getting things like an infernal cape yeah I was like shaky it was nervous everyone's first time is always rough nothing compared remotely close to the, the like mega scale stuff wow um, so much I, coordination too it's not a solo thing you just it's not all it's not, on you, you gotta it's rely not a solo on. thing but you have you have to perform but at yep. the same time it's like it. it's just so many moving parts coming together and then head phase as well is like, oh no, it's 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 actually almost painful to talk about it. It's like how much it went on for, and this was like a nine 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 ten month project that slowly wrapped up to hundred man CMs, 
and not a day went by where people weren't like in a voice channel trying to figure out different mechanics for different things uh, with you know particular room solves and nifty ideas for Alm. It got to the point where we even had a we had a specific start for Alm, where our tanks would go in, draw aggro, moves move Alm's head around, prepare a skip all the while the team came in, and they would move to a side just to make sure that people didn't get one shot on on entry. And that was like the care of attention and detail that was not just necessary. That was, you know, not just fun to do and, and relevant, but like necessary to make it work and not have people die on you. Crazy. But yeah, yeah, I mean, biggest tangent of all time, but the answer is relief. Beyond beyond anything else, it wasn't like accomplishment or like, holy crap, we're amazing. It was just like, I am so relieved this is over. I have my Saturdays back. <laughs> um, because Because each raid took four hours. Jeez. Starting at like 8 p.m. And this was for up to, you know, 50, 50, 60 people who were putting in their time for this as well. And the rest were scalers who couldn't have done it without. But, man, I don't, nothing, nothing else compares to that kind of thing. It, so I much coordination it, goes along with that, too. Just getting people yeah. there and like just performing perfectly. Yeah. It's crazy. And I really, I really think that it, you know, it, it got, it got the attention it deserved, but it's still, to date and I think will always be possibly the the biggest ever team effort and challenge that has been successfully completed in old school. Oh, it might, 100%. It might remain that way. 100%. Um, there's a whole lot of solo challenges that people have done. Fire capes and funnel capes. Um, stuff like solo top. Raid stuff. Uh, it, it, nothing compares remotely to the idea of that many people. Even even like the five man CM records and stuff, they're really cool and they're super well done. But it does not take nine months. It does not take ten months. Yeah. And it does not take that amount of effort and time. Um, but for for anyone who hasn't actually seen the mega scale stuff in action, there are some vods up and around. But more importantly, there's a Discord that was used to organize all this, and that's like the place to have a look at some of the the chat, the history, the uh, the goals and stuff. I will definitely so have all the know. all the links that <clears throat> I previously linked, um, well, that I previously shown, and any links that you want, I will have them in the YouTube description. Yeah. So click on the description; they'll be there. That's uh, yeah, it's a super cool thing to look at. If nothing else, just like even looking at some of the goals in the uh, so, like the gold channel, and having a look at the uh... <laughs> so that picture I sent earlier. This that was like the early days, and then this is like. How it ended up. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show the difference of this. One second. Is is just a really cool sort of comparison pitch. I I ended up going from being a Vanguard role to one of the two dedicated tanks as well. So that's why my gear's a bit different. So that was a three point five. Sorry, three point uh, three point three million point raid. Jeez. Tur turns out all kind of basically a million over. more points. What and would... to think that when we started these, the maximum point ever seen was like 1.8, 1.9. Was there three so... items on that final one? I, th I think there were two. Or were just two dexes? Yeah. You're never guaranteed loot, right? So it's yeah, just... yeah. I was just curious if no, because I only saw the chat. <laughs> and okay. the really silly thing is, as soon as you cap, you, you cap out triple loot at like 1.8 million points. So going over 1.8 is just completely irrelevant other than just for the sake of it. Are you kind of sad about that? Do you wish it would have just kept going? Yeah, there were talks for a while about how it would go up to like five and how they might change that. Never actually happened, and I don't blame them, but yeah. it would have been really cool to see five loots. It would have given them more purpose to doing the raids. That's crazy. I'm actually uh, so, like, I'm glad we, uh, that was actually very, very interesting, and especially a lot of people that hadn't ever seen. If you guys have never even heard of Adicon, I'm assuming most of you that are into somewhat PVM know who he is, but, um, there were a bunch of streams on that and they would pull mad viewers of just going through these hundred man CMs and stuff. So if you like, and just another shout out to Adicon, like be sure to follow him on Twitch and his YouTube. He has a bunch of the, especially if you're working toward the Inferno, he has a bunch of uh, tips and tricks and stuff and guides and stuff. But moving on, something that kind of leads into it. What are your thoughts on a potential, I guess, speaking of like, hard pvm and stuff and crazy accomplishments thoughts on a potential hard mode inferno 
Or do you think the six Jad challenge is what they are thinking is going to be like that really tough challenge? So when they, at, at some point in the last few months, they changed the text on completion of the Inferno to like, instead of just like, wow, I can't believe you did this or congrats or something, it changed it to Un uh, para 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 paraphrasing yeah. until next time. Right? Yeah, 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 something like that. They, they, were, they, were, they were hinting at the idea of something new. Whether it's six Jads or not, I want to say I hope not, but I, I feel like it's almost certainly going to just be a six Jads thing, right? Um, it does look like they're going to be either custom waves to some degree, or some sort of thing you have to solve to get to six strats. It's not going to be like his six strats. It's like his waves one to six, where six is six strats. I'm just really hoping they don't do one, two, three, four, five strats. That's going to defeat the entire point of it. Um, I'd like I'd like there to be really interesting and potentially new kind of waves we haven't seen. So like a ranger, a major, and five melees. Good luck. That's a wave solve. I would love to see stuff like that that are implemented into this challenge. Um, just to give like some silly things for people to try out and mess around with, and still be realistic, but also just um, because six trads on its own is going to be kind of boring for anyone who understands anyone who understands how to do trads properly. I mean, you you have you have people who have been doing like one prayer point, one HP, pure six trads, right? Yeah, and it's just sit there stuff. flicking, and it's like. I get that they're really good at what they do and they got practice in this, but if they can do one prayer point, one HP, pure low combat, six strads, anyone can do it with Mexico. Give enough time, you can do it. So it's not really a challenge in the sense that there's, I, nothing, there's nothing leading up to it. It's just sort of just go, good luck, bash I, your head against it. I personally don't think six strads is going to be the tough challenge that <clears throat> they're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think they just had to say something because... It kind of, at least in the blog, that like what I read was basically like one of the challenges is going to be the six jads, and I think they said um, like because uh, the six jads they said like completing six jads will unlock the jad metamorphosis, yeah. um, and I'm pretty sure it'll be like you know you have to at least complete the inferno to do the triple jad challenge there's probably going to be a triple jad and then there's probably going to be like the six jad afterward or something but personally i think they're not telling us something um i think jagex is at that level where they can now just give us something as a surprise and like i don't think it's like it's, it's not like a team thing where it's like they just physically couldn't produce like another inferno type thing i don't think it's going to be on the level of inferno like the complication of it but i think there's going to be uh more difficult challenge that we don't even know of yet but it's going to come out with achievement diaries i think six shots is going to be something and then i think there's going to be one more thing that we just don't know about and it's going to be really tough and it's going to be involving zook i think not just jads that would be cool to see a lot like a zook challenge based on that yeah i i'm i'm, I'm hesitant think to think that they would make it too similar to the inferno purely because they don't want people to like practice the inferno via not yeah, doing yeah, the inferno yeah. That's like their big thing right now is like why they won't release six strats unless you have an infernal game, which is a good thing. But um, I've always it, it, it's kind of interesting you say that's a good thing because I remember like tournament worlds they'd block inferno or something because of yeah um, big fan of that personally. <laughs> I personally didn't actually it, like because all it really comes down to is you're just saving supplies really and you know you you can practice with better gear but like. Honestly, I was at the Wait, point. No, well, it's it's not it's not that in my opinion. Though. What do you think? It's the nerves. The, the the leading factor behind people dying from drads onwards in the inferno is not like the APM. It's one of the lowest APM things out of all the high level PVM stuff. It's the nerves purely. Oh, and I yeah, think yeah. And I, and I think I, I think being able to practice removes that entirely. And that's that's the whole point is that you have to get there on your own merit, and you have to get through that on your own merit, and having the ability to practice in a no-lose situation removes that entirely. Or at least to a degree where it's now a lot more attainable. Yeah. No, uh, I, I, th I think I think that's the important thing to keep in mind when it comes to not, not like, letting people practice. That's the thing that really matters. It's not just for the sake of practice. Because, yes, you know, yeah. I mean, there are there are private servers you could do it on if you really wanted to. Yeah, I agree there. Yeah, I agree it's tougher and letting people practice would make it... Um, make it easier and the nerves would go away. But 
personally, I, I got to the point where I realized let people practice, like let them just, why not let people have the, just the, um, get rid of those nerves and actually get better at the game. Like why not just give them that practice and stuff? Because that's, that's a good point. Yeah. That's, that's sort of where I was getting to is just kind of like, yeah, I can, it can get rid of the nerves and it can make the Inferno just a bit more prestigious. But at the same time, like, why not let people, why not give people every opportunity to get better at the game and just increase the, what we have? Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that anyone who's actually at the stage of doing Inferno is probably good enough at the game where they're not even playing the game for that nostalgic effect anymore. They're actually just enjoying the game as it is. Yeah. And sort of, because I mean, obviously Inferno is not nostalgic, so it's like, they're going for this achievement for the sake of the achievement itself. And it's like, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if you practice or not. It's just getting the game. Yeah. Either way. And yeah. like, I understand that it's always been that way now. And like, they're not going to unleash like triple jazz before you complete Inferno, which is fair. But at the same time, I think honestly, give people as much practice as they want with, like, I would be completely fine if they did let people practice triple jabs before going to Inferno. Like, why not let them get better and get rid of those nerves? They'd probably still have those nerves. But that's just my opinion of just let people get good at the game. Like, why not? Yeah, I suppose I suppose nowadays. I mean, ultimately, the risk comes from, like, if you're, if you're in the real thing going for your real cape, if you die at any point, it's like a restart, right? So yeah. It's not going to get rid of it entirely at all. Yeah. And I, so, I just, true. I figure, like, why not just let people get better? But I'm. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't mind that they have it the way it is. Yeah, I, I'm pretty impartial generally. Like, if they yeah. wanted to make it open, I'm like, okay, I can now do speed zone in, in, on tournament worlds and not waste supplies and stuff. But yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's that's the other thing is like kind of where they've how you have to boost at Turiel just to get Inferno tasks. I really appreciate them uh, doing what they've done and um, for the combat achievements, you can now do like three zook tasks in a row for people that just love that um this is a really... yeah. yeah and and yeah. honestly like they have come out with things that's like why like could we be able to do inferno on task not get any slayer xp and not get a cape but just go for speed runs and what did what were your thoughts on that because i remember thinking like yeah well, like, why not you know if you're not yeah, getting any it, it, it's completely a why not kind of thing um and you I, have I to suppose, get a cape beforehand. I, 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 suppose the, I suppose the problem with this is that it devalues playing the actual game itself. Yeah, and that's the only um, real. It, it's it's the same kind of thing. Like if Trailblazers existed all the time, why wouldn't you do that? If Inferno Speeds existed, scot free of time investment, why wouldn't you just do that? If that's yeah. all you care about. And again, the truth is, like I probably would, and I wouldn't play the main game at all. So you're taking a player out of the main game effectively, and. I don't know. I, I think the only way it ever works is if you, it, you you have to import their gear. You have to import you have to like import a player save from their gear and their stats into that version. So if you haven't earned that in the main game, you have to earn it now. That's the only way it ever works, I think. Yeah, it's in, it's the interesting because if if you worlds. if you just think about like, you know, limiting people just kind of like if like just in a fake scenario if something was just arguably more fun than the main game it's like but you're just holding it back because like they understand it's more fun so we can't give it to them or else it'll just kill the thing that's not as fun it's kind of silly almost it's like why not just yeah. give it to them but i yeah. i still understand the argument of like you know let's keep it, it's kind of like when they came out with iron man in general it's, it's just kind of like separated the community in a way which... Yeah, you're not really playing the same game. Yeah, it's... are you? Yeah. It, it, so, like, here's the thing: like, in what sense do Iron Man have a direct impact on the, on like the game community and or economy and or, you know, the direction of the game? They shouldn't have a, they shouldn't have an impact on any of that, really. Yeah, I mean, and in the same sense, it's it it's just because they're like, in the instance that you're in, doesn't mean they're actually having an effect. Uh, minus when you drop trade stuff, which is rare, but like, yeah, it, it's kind of the same thing. If they were to make it just a subsection of the main game where you could just redo Inferno repeatedly, it's the same thing, except they're actually just in an instance on their own now. <laughs> yeah, but what? Yeah, 
have you ever thought because uh i've kind of mentioned this on previous but like imagine you could duo inferno or like something crazy yeah, where they I make mean, it even tougher but there was ways to like do a co-op inferno where it actually you can sign me up yeah Instantan like in instantaneously it would just it would be a dream come true that'd be so much fun the, the one big change that i would really like for a hard mode inferno is to have it so that npcs ignore your defense and they only ever care about the prayer you have up. That's probably the single biggest and best change that they could make to Inferno as it stands to make it like genuinely difficult. So if, if they were to slap a challenge mode title in front of the Inferno, that's what they would do. Um, because this means you can't just tank bats while you kill a major. You can't just tank a ranger using your BCP that you brought along. You can't just, you know, you can't, you, you can't get away. You have to actually prayerfully. Um, would it be would you be against be like like think about an inferno but every single thing will max hate you if you don't flick it but you can bring purple sweets in do you think that that would be like fun because i'm again i'm not a i'm not an inferno enthusiast that just does inferno all day from, from the perspective of an owner of a million purple sweets yes <laughs> from the perspective of a pvm who likes inferno no because I, purple sweets really ruined the game in a lot of ways. The one stackable food. Yep. No. No. And I. The, the, the one stackable food. Yeah. And 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 I just mean there would be a separate inferno where basically it's a it's a completely different thing. You can bring sweets in, but it's like everything's gonna max hit you if you miss, miss a flick. Mm, so. I, I I just like I like the idea that it just hits you if you miss a flick. I don't think it should max hit you. Because then you, you, would, what happens is you're, you're turned into a pure, right? You're turned into a one defense account, essentially. Yeah, no, that's true. And we know, and, and we know, people could do one defense pures. So we know by extension, it should be possible to do that with zero percent chance of being able to tank stuff. That's true. And the pure challenge in itself isn't like crazy difficult for people who can do Inferno, but for people who are able to do Inferno but you know haven't got experience with pure capes. That's an actual challenge. Oh yeah, and it's not, and it's not something where you just stack NPC stats increasing to like one point five x like challenge mode, CM, uh, chambers anyway. So that's definitely a nice way to go about it. So here's a question from Zomalom. He asks you, Addy. Um, I'd be very interested to hear what Addy would like to see, and hate to see in raids three. This is the age old question of the year. It's sort of ultimately i don't know and i think that that's kind of a cop-out answer but i feel like with regards to raid design dragix have been really great they've listened so far uh they've actually taken notes and each one has been better i know there's only two but the point is that they're actually quality content and tob has been much smoother than chambers has chambers is like still to this day going through uh different changes right like even like yep. last week or two weeks ago there's changes Tom has not been touched in i don't know how long now ever since like the uh potion thing was changed maybe it's been a really long time since a major update i think maiden red crabs were like the last one or something so yep, i think so i think their their process to develop race 3 will be extremely streamlined i think their testing player testing is going to be really high quality this is like my hopes at least um so I, I think I think for starters the raid is going to be from release very very good <laughs> to say that to say the least in terms of quality in terms of content um, in terms of expectation I think it will meet what most people want from in terms of end game thing but with regards to that though it does need to be properly challenging for high level players and I don't just mean this in like day one challenging I mean I would love to see the kind of content that ends up chancing players who are experienced. And that's a really hard thing to come by because the closest thing to it is probably the Inferno, right? Yep. Where even players with 20, 30 KC sometimes die. Um, sometimes. Ra rarely at that stage if you know what you're doing, but it does happen. That's kind of the level that I'd love to see. I don't think it should be as punishing. Like, you're removed from, like you're removed from the raid, you got to restart. But I'd I love think to it see should. The, but well, I, I I think it should just be really heavily punishing towards loot, personally. I think it should so be that, heavily so punish punishing toward uh. 
but I, well, 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 okay. I I say it this way. I say theater of blood because it will be team based. I say it should be theater of blood where if all of you die, the raid is over. Because oh, I I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. I don't like how yeah. Chambers is where it's just kind of like you just keep dying, 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 dying. No, no real. But I I suppose you combine the penalties of TOB with the difficulty of Inferno with regards to survivability. Um, for starters, that's a really nice place to go, and unfortunately, that'll annoy the hell out of the uh, mid-level community. Even some of the high-level community guys won't like it, and it probably won't survive the first week. Is the reality, because people will complain about it. I really want. I don't. Know, I don't know how to get by this problem of like catering to the mid-level. Yeah. Now it has to. You just have to be like, this is raids three, very fucking hard you know just maybe, maybe, maybe if their starts on it from the get-go is like hey this is this is meant to be the, the end game thing, yeah this is this is for players who are like max combat that's the point Tra chambers is done by like levels 80 purers these days for fun and venezuelans so, that's right it's just for gp <laughs> yeah. it's like and that's what everything I, becomes know. over time because people master stuff and they'll give perfect guides and stuff but like can still be like inferno is still very tough even w with everything figured out yeah and th there's this big learning curve because it's reliant on wave solves yeah. and I... wave solves this is the this is the unique thing there it's like the npc stuff it's just like flick stuff right you know, like the vanguard room is essentially the same when it comes down to like combat triangle and flick stuff if you really want to go and tank and hit stuff but S something i really wave... want to see is like wave solves is really good real puzzle rooms like tough puzzles like legitimate well, that, puzzles that, that, that's i know it's not i know it's not what you mean but the inferno in that sense is every oh, way yeah, yeah, like, yeah it is a puzzle it, it, it's a combat puzzle right yep. crabs is a joke <laughs> yeah that's tight not a puzzle isn't, tight rope isn't a puzzle ice demon is a joke slash not a puzzle yep. i um, want i want a legitimate yeah. puzzle where it's like um you know a, they can't just come out with unlimited puzzles but like something where it's like it's a team-based thing where if one of your team members fucks up you're all getting fucked up and like so you you have to get a good team because it's like you know maybe you have like something i really enjoyed was those um uh if you did like sins of the Qu sins of the father quest um if you remember uh that little puzzle that you did it was just fun oh, it was the, quick it was quick and fun oh, yeah it was the one of the daughter of the thing. yeah yep 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 i Once really like that and i think it would be cool as if there was like four puzzles so if you're in like a four man there's four of them and it's like you have to rely on your team because each of you have to solve this and it is randomized but it's still fun and quick like you can still just get it done but you are still like I, reliant time based i don't know how i feel about that i i would love puzzles like i like puzzles i don't like everything just being combat i like raids being like there's super tough combat and then all of a sudden it's like brains it's like you gotta I'm have both. Kind, I'm kind of the opposite, actually, when it comes to this. I I really like the idea of pure combat. I feel like uh, we just have too much of it, and that's my personal opinion. I really love puzzle rooms if they're good and thought out. I would. Here's here's the thing that I I care about right now is that I would like to see an example before I like say yes, I want this, because I don't think we have a good example of a good puzzle room as it stands. So if we're gonna dive into like the idea of let's give more puzzles to raids, let's see some actual good examples first. I think something that could be cool is, com and they could really do this, is do a fully randomized room. Just it would just it would literally just have to be a square room, and it could be similar to crabs, where it's some sort of a light puzzle, not extremely difficult. Would take under like for people that experience it would take under two minutes, but just it is randomized every time you go in there. It's black. You can't see previously to the like the previous room, but you go in and it's a randomized thing. It's like, okay, quickly figure this out. And it's like, there could be a light going somewhere, and you just have to figure it out. And it can be fully team based, you know, just running around trying to match up the colors. But something that actually truly randomizes, and they could do that. I feel like I don't feel like that's too tough. But I want like that's just again my opinion i don't want everything just exclusively combat based i wanted to have some sort of brain yeah. activity going on i think i think i'm solidly solidly in the position of i want to see an example before i commit to having that's true because commit, it could commit be. to saying it's okay yeah because it goes one of two ways it either it either is a good puzzle and it works or if you commit to that initially and it's like 
that's what you put in the raid and people are like this is just song of the elves but in a raid this is awful kill me yeah. no song of the elves is awful because it's so... way too long and it's just this huge huge place like it's, it's not obvious either like those handholds on the books to get across to the mid side didn't see them for half an yeah. hour no no the, the whole place oh is just God, this, it reminds me of zaya where it's just this giant thing that did it the rooms did not need to be this big like it could have just been very simplified want, and yeah like i don't i also don't want things to be obvious i just don't want them to be hidden right yeah there was this there was this like problem with being overly cryptic and like completely impossible to see unless you were looking for it directly and it's just like i don't need or want this like i, I get it's a quest but it's an actual time waste until a guide comes out and Another thing I would think would be cool in raids, again, like, we kind of see raids as just combat only. That's what kind of Theater of Blood was. That's basically what Chambers is. But I think it would be really cool if they added something similar to the Sepulchre, um, where there's actually, like, shit coming at you. Because I'm I'm assuming it's going to be, like, desert-based and oh, in a pyramid. Oh, combat? Dude, okay, I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that at all. That's amazing. Yeah, no, like, I'm thinking Hallowed of combined, Hallowed combined Sepulchre with a bunch with of other, combat. yeah, monsters and shit. Oh, my God, yeah. Like, you no, could I easily do that. Like, think of, like, that. dart walls coming at you. Like, there's shit yeah, where you have to dodge, and then you also have to kill this boss or something. That's a completely different idea I had not ever considered. I love that, yeah. yeah. No, sign me up. <laughs> if, if, imagine, like, a spinning blade that flies towards you. Yeah. You get hit by that, you just die. That's it. You're out of the <laughs> yeah. range. Yeah. Or that. what I really want is a boulder... Um, you know how like Indiana Jones has like that huge boulder that's coming at you and you have to keep moving, but you have to kill these things as well that are like at you. I think it's just, right. there, there's so Ooh. much with like pyramid and desert based themes, I think would be so cool. That's a really cool line of thought. Yeah. No, I, I'd love to see that. I mean, I, I spent like what a week straight at Sepulchre, just doing Sepulchre all like all day, every day. That was a lot of fun. That was one of the most fun bits of uh, content. That it's so year. much fun. Um, okay imagine this i just thought of this imagine there's a like um some sort of trap that triggers and you have to solve a puzzle in like a minute or you fucking die like you just die so it's like just like get the <laughs> hell out of there like and if you die the rest of your team can go on if they pass it but like you're just fucking dead like, i think that would be so much fun i just i want things to be just stressful just like you go in, there's a fucking boulder about to crush you unless you solve this, like, right now. Yeah, it's like, just like a Sudoku but, or but, something. Yeah, but, like, I don't want it to be too RNG-based where it's like, oh, I didn't get the right puzzle, reset, reset. It's like, I want it to be consistently, like, a certain amount of time it should take. We need some custom old-school puzzles. I think it'd be so cool. I, I'm just so excited for it's, it. It's it's definitely a nice line of thought to think about. I, I just I love the idea of the arrows and the spinning blades personally. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> uh, because because like things like fires in Sepulchre where you can just take your time and go through them with a pattern is not that interesting. Yeah. It's nice to have some, but I don't think it should be the main thing. Like the spinning blades that force you to be on time and also judge correctly when they're coming back, that's a lot more interesting. I think that kind of judgment when it comes to a game, like that really makes the sort of it it, it, it takes away from like let's just hit numbers and sort of Let's uh, let's move to set locations and things, because when it comes down to judgment, there isn't like a set thing that's correct, necessarily. Anyway, I mean, the, the, you have a rough timing, but if you have a, an intersection of three different swords that are all random, you have to be a bit more careful now. You can't just you know you can't just go on a set timer or anything. Yeah, I have and one that, more. That's, that's like that's like learned player skill, which is good. I have one more idea that I was just thinking about. Like, have you ever mm -hmm. played a? Uh... Uh, Fall Guys. I never played it, but I've seen some of the maps. I've played a little, yeah. But there's one of those maps where it's like, it shows you the, the tiles, like the little fruits on the tiles, and then it'll tell you like what fruit it is, and you have to stand on that tile or else you'll fall down. Right. Um, I think it would be kind of cool is if there was like a little like 5 by 5 room, and it just quickly flashes like what you're supposed to be standing on, and then you got to stand on it. But like each of you has like a different thing to stand on if you pass three of them oh you, you can't can... you can't copy you just have to you yeah have to, you just have to memorize attention. on your own or See, you that's, know that, that, that's the kind of i don't know if i'd classify i suppose it's kind of a puzzle right yeah but it's but it's it's like are you paying attention do you understand what's going on can you react quick enough yep those are three those are three things that work so yeah i think fun. that'd be a really fun room just really quick too it's just four little flashing things gets a little bit quicker each time and then as soon as it's done it's over like just move on to the next room 
Yeah. And that would be no, completely yeah. consistent for speed runs too, because it's just exactly time based. And it's like you just have to know what you're doing. Well, not just that, but if there were, if it was a grid of like randomly generated things, you would have to choose the one closest to the exit. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, <laughs> so true. There's, true. There's stuff like that. There'd be like minor tick saves, but still relevant yep. that you can incorporate. I yeah, think there's totally. so like that, many cool things that, you can do really well. with raids. I I really do. Hope, I mean, it's it's got to be desert, right? Yeah, it's got. If, if they if if they don't do it at this point, it's like what what the hell have you been planning after all? But <laughs> yeah. no, but yeah, I th I think the idea of like movable traps that require judgment. Anything that's sort of like memory game, small thing that doesn't take too long is yeah, like, you know, it, 10 second room. Yep. It just works. It does. It does work. It'd be lovely. It'd be really nice to see some of that stuff. I'd love And that. again, coupled with the idea that things, even at a high level, still get shots from them if you're not careful. And they could so, even make it like they could really add on some other things where it's like there's like some monster in there chucking magic or range at you. So not only are you keeping track of like the tile you're supposed to stand on, but you're also having to flick your prayers during it. So it's like so much going on. You're like, shit. Sign me up. <laughs> that sounds so <laughs> much fun. Yeah, sign me up. That's that's And it's just there. quick too. It's just like, okay, let's okay, boom, next room, let's go. Like that's what's well, fun. Got, got to think of the penalty, I guess, as well. This is also relevant. Like if you fall down, what happens? You just die or Or you just take a huge yeah, chunk of damage. Or you have to like I don't know. What what would also be cool is like something that I've always uh, kind of not liked about uh, Theater of Blood is that when you die, you just sit there. I think it would be really cool is if you could get you could get back into the game, like into the action if you solved something. You solved a puzzle or you killed something real quick. You ran through a little area and then you can actually get back and help your team. Something like that where it's like it's not just, okay, let me just fucking sit here now for 15 minutes while they kill I, I think I think for the boss room you should probably just sit out if you die, but for the rooms prior to that, and I think it should be that kind of stage thing, probably should get back into that. There should still be a punishment, either in, in, either in the form of, like, time. That yeah, you actually or points, out. or it's just something. Or yeah. points or something. But as long as as long as you can get back in and not just sit there mindlessly, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. That's I what I said. There's so, many, there's so many options. It sounds so much fun. Because in, in Chambers, it's, it's just a time and point penalty. In TOB, it's, like, a non-activity non and point penalty. But um, I mean, even if you can't participate in the main room, you still can get back. It's like it's still a genuine time penalty, but it's not just fucking idle time where you're running yeah. or idle time where you're sitting still. So that's that's a really nice sort of transition back. What do you think? Okay, so Rob or um, Rob asks, <clears throat> it would be cool to hear your thoughts on cheat clients for end game content, whether or not it devalues accomplishments and Jagex doesn't care. I've always been pretty openly against cheat clients i'm a base rune light user um Same. i've dabbled with other clients to test stuff like the npc hider thing i don't use it and i don't think i ever will until it comes to rune light so when things in, you know so like okay so i've seen a bunch of people speedrunning inferno and you know the vods of it and stuff and they still use things that aren't on rune light which are probably not allowed but they're just skimming the line do you think it's like okay so here's here's one thing like especially if in combat achievements are going to come out with a time-based inferno challenge you know maybe like yeah, sub 60 yeah. or something where it almost or like maybe it even gets faster than that where it's almost like using a cheat client is actually going to help me because achieve this quicker because like people that use these clients where npcs can you know disappear instantly once they're dead or yeah certain things uh, like you know, I don't know how do i so I, I put up a nice post that summarizes this quite well in the content creator disc have a look in the ask the jmod section it's the most recent thing look and this is like this is this is the thing with it it's it's, it's if if you want to make old school into this sort of how, how to put it I need, to, I need to read and read this for a second. Uh, I see it. Yeah, it was, it was like in the light of content creators having help with tourneys and speedrun competitions coming into practice and all this kind of thing. It's like there are so many clients out there that just completely ruin the difference between two times. Like in in Fono for the uh, NPC hider thing, it's like thirty seconds. I'm used to playing without it. I can probably get it down to 20 seconds, but I still lose time on every single run I do. Yep. Um, and that time is something that is just completely unfair. 
No, I, I don't mind as it stands. There's no competitive scene for it. It's just for fun. Yep. But you cannot push a game competitively when it has problems with clients like this. And, of course, the one easy thing to do is to compile a rune light into their own client, absorb it, and make it their own client. Anything else is, like, insta-bannable, and you must log in through rune light or something. Uh, I don't know, it's like... I really wish that would be the solve, and I really wish they'd push that in the direction. But they've given no inclination of being able to do that or wanting to do that. Um, if anything, they've made worse decisions on how to go about it, because they were trying to go up with... They were trying to go with OS Buddy initially, weren't they? And that was just like a complete nightmare that didn't work out well. Uh, it's it's odd as well, because they've been talking about doing stuff for their own client. And what do we get? We get like updates on the sound system and uh, <laughs> what was it like the, the option menu for things? Yep. I, I don't know. It's it's odd. I, I feel like I feel like they're not really prioritizing things that really matter. And when it comes out, it's going to be too little too late, basically. Yeah. It's just tough because, like, for one thing, I love Runelight. And it would be awful to play now without Runelight. It would just be awful. Like, if I just had to yeah. play vanilla. I, no GPU, I, no stretch mode for me. Like, it's no tile indicators. That's awful. I went to RuneFest, uh, the last RuneFest, yeah. and the PCs that ran base client. God. Because they, because they had to. Now, I didn't mind anything about it except for one thing, and that was the FPS. These were good, these were like not top range PCs, obviously, but like good PCs running just base client, nothing else open. 20 FPS max. Jeez. Even less in raids. I did I did a, I did a raid with a uh, kickable, I think it was. Painful. We, we got we got a Dex, one raid <laughs> at RuneFest, and it was like the worst experience of my life. I I just it was just awful. Probably a combination of like 60 hertz monitors. This actually did matter because it was low FPS. Yeah. 60 hertz monitors and 15 FPS to 20 FPS. Just awful. You you could yep. play, but it was by no means anything close to the standard. It's like almost like playing expecting. mobile, just where it's just everything's clunky and everything is like laggy. Well, it's just slightly. I know the FPS real? is better on mobile, but yeah, it, it, mobile FPS is amazing. It's like I I don't uh, know why they can't implement just a 60 yeah. frames per second here. It, it, it's literally on mobile. Right, it's, mobile it's just has that delay I'm talking about, where it's like you tap and it's like, all right, now move. Right, because yeah, they're just preparing for like the tap and hold. Uh, it's it's frustrating. It's kind of like I would very but, much like to see. I, I sort of bring it back to when they did ban things from Moonlight. I got I got annoyed because I didn't feel like they were OP. Like for example, left clicking ham members became bannable for pickpocketing easy clues i was like it's n not a big deal but it's like as soon as you ban one thing they have to ban a few things and then it all has to be bannable yeah. or else nothing's enforced and then the other thing was like menu entry swapper was a huge thing i used and loved and i didn't feel like it was op and they banned it and i'm like fuck like I i'm really annoyed that they won't go into the specifics i don't know who's in charge of it i haven't looked i haven't looked to be fair i haven't talked about it but I, I I have no clue why they carpet ban stuff, right? Yeah. Like and I, they don't yeah. they don't actually like make exceptions or tool guard exceptions. It's like they're not even open to it. Yeah. And again, I it's, in, in in all fairness, we haven't asked that much. And part of what I put up in a post in the Discord is like get them to actually answer that. Yeah. But it's sort of like it it just gets to the point of like, okay, clients right. are good. Like they are good, but it when it's coming down to I need to get a certain time because I actually need to get this grandmaster achievement task done. This feature that's technically illegal, but it's on this client is going to save me a minute on average. Like I just got to use it. Like it's almost like other people have used it. Why can't like, why should I not be like using it? It's just like, it's going to get to that point where it's like, I need to get this time where right now. Yeah. Like you said, it's, there's no real competitive scene. Prime, prime but, example is like scouting, right? Yep. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if someone did like non runelight -like scouting versus scouting? Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're five minutes slower; you can't compete. Yep. And that is a crazy time difference when it comes to twenty minute raids. So, I don't know. I don't think it's ever going to be on the scale of scouting. I hope not. But you know, these these twenty second, thirty second time saves or massive quality of life things. Yeah. They add up. Yeah, they do. And, and ultimately, when there's no solid rules around the really important ones. It's going to be a problem, especially for times to come. I mean, for example, like the puzzle stuff in the Raid 3 things you're just talking about, if they're just auto-solved, 
it's it's you know it's another five seconds here it's another five seconds there at what point at what point and the other problem is for streamers like you know at what point can you just use them off stream and be okay with it or um or in just you know even use it on stream like some people just use it on stream it just i don't know it's it's such an odd thing it and then is. like the targeting system for streamers is rough because some streamers feel like they're targeted, others feel like they're not. They're not like helped enough. Uh, this will be this will be a fun talking point, but like, you know, you know the likes of uh, like there's been manual bans for macros on people who are live streaming at the time. Yep. And it's like they're obviously not doing that, and it was applied manually. Question mark. And then I know I'm not the biggest streamer or anything, but another time my my alt gets banned for buying a cape. Question mark. It's it's. I get they don't understand that my account exists, and it's my account, but the trail of evidence very clearly showed that I made it, and I played it, and it's mine, essentially. And even Tyrem, when he went and unbanned the account, was like, yeah, this was a mistake. <laughs> and it's just like, where's, where's, the, where's the sort of consistency here? It's an odd one. Yeah, now it's, there's things that really do take a lot of thought. They're not simple answers, and Sometimes there is no real straight answer. It's just kind of like compromises to make it work, but yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I have another quick topic. I'm trying to think if there's anything you would also like to talk about, you can bring it up, but Some um, my what is some or what is what are you currently like working on uh in game and then also like what are you most looking forward to? Like you're looking forward to combat achievements or what are what are you excited for for this next year and what are you currently doing i'm currently roasty toasty sitting tight for combat achievements would be the summary um i did a lot of stuff this year with regards to like my account progression and in terms of what i personally play for for the most part it's progression of account and now that i'm i, I so i i did no joke this is all in one day i'd sort of prepared for it a long time but i did Quest cape, finished quest cape first time ever, finished achievement diary cape first time ever, got the champion's cape, got the what other cape was it? I, I did like I did like six things all in one day. Oh yeah, music music cape. So it was like quest achievement, uh, champion music, champ champion music max cape all in one day. Damn. And then I did a hundred master clues opening. On that day as well, for the sack cape, right? Just just for the sake of doing yeah. 100 masters, had like 104 or something. I remember that, and that was Popping that was a really that was a really super fun stream. It was like a maxing thing, but it was also like that really polished off my account as far as I considered it being complete. It feels and... good having like things completed where it's like the game is basically fully unlocked to you. Yeah, there's yeah. players that I mean, don't really understand that. Like I've I've had IRL friends that are very casual. They refuse to do quests and they burn out I, so easily because they have nothing to do. Like you have no content to do because you're too lazy to do the like a few quests. And I know they're painful to do sometimes, but it's like you got to do it or else. One, the one a day is not that much time investment even yeah. for a casual player, right? Yep. But it's like. Anyway, I, I, so I, I polished all this stuff off in the space of, you know, f four months leading up to maxing. All done in one day. And I'm like, I'm not going to burn out now. I've got loads to do. So I, I do some Infernos, I do some CMs. The stuff that I was originally doing for fun. And it's like, I really kind of miss the account progression stage. Which is a shame, because when it comes to maxing, I have no motivation to go further than that when it comes to XP. Yeah. If I had the GP, I'd sit at bank doing Herblor or something for 200 mil, sure. But it's not really the same as, like, it's not an active progression towards something unlockable other yeah. than, like, just XP. Which is a shame. I really I really miss that, actually. I do, um, too, a little bit. I was thinking I'm sure about that some, the other day. I'm, I'm sure at some point I'll probably max the alt account, and that'll be a whole other thing. But I'm still very content right now with where that's at, at least. But beside that, sign up, but like, beside that kind of, like, account progression, I'm, I'm sort of left with the idea of of achievements, right? Which is in a form of like item collectibles, uh, I suppose clue stuff, which I'm actually not interested in at all, unfortunately. Not a, not a big clue dude. And that's totally fine. There's uh, not many of us yeah. obsessed clue people. 
there's pets, there's KC, and then there's speedrun times. There's probably a few other things, but nothing really that I'm concerned with. Yeah. And for like pets, I've got all the pets that I want, with the exception of the Armadil pet and the Callisto pet. I have no motivation to go for Armadil, um, but I did learn the methods for solo, like effectively, which was really cool, and also ulting stuff. So I have those ready to go if I ever get interested in that again. Callisto, for which I've done the same with regards to ulting and trying to find some cool safe spots and stuff, that's all ready to go, but I've just, I don't know, there's no motivation there currently for pet hunting. I have two Callisto cubs if you want one. Just I would give love you, one. <laughs> just give you one. Well, actually, one of them died. I lost yeah, another right, right. Yeah, but I got another one. You can have that one. I'll go get another one. Oh heck! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just need to get back on the Callisto grind. Um, I'd like a Scorpio as well at some point. But beyond those three pets, and that's not really a lot of pets. I really don't care for all pets or yeah. even any, any of the others. It's just they're not appealing. And it really has to be all or nothing because it's like, as soon as you go for like, ooh, like I want thirty. It's like you just. Yeah, you want your pets that you like, and then after that, it's either all or stop. Basically, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I w I wish there was a way to like figure out where the motivation comes for that kind of thing. I think you just have to you have to know, right? It's not really something yeah. you can like try and work towards. Yeah. If you want something, you want something, you go do it. Yeah, but... pets for me. It, it, if I played like a main and there wasn't like, and I could just buy every item. Like, if I were to go for pets, it would have to be all of them because. There has to be like some progression to it. it. Can't just be I want a pet. Like, okay, like I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I would need to get all of them eventually. Like for me, doing nightmare, it's like I don't want to do nightmare. I just I have so many other goals that are leading, just surrounded around this mace that I need. So <laughs> you'll get it soon, TM. One day. <laughs> so the other thing, of course, was KC. And KC is a bit of a weird one for me because the two the two bits of content that I really do is solo CM. Regular raids to some degree, sure, but solo CM and Inferno. And solo CM KC doesn't track, it just tracks as KC. And I, I think today I have the most solo CM KC in the game at like 900 something. Sync's yeah, probably, probably getting quite close. There's probably a couple other people who are pretty close, but um, for a period of time, until quite recently, I definitely had the most KC solo. And it doesn't show, which I don't mind really because I'm not super competitive about KC. But it's the kind of thing I wish did actually track, and there yeah. is no way to track that. So I'm, I'm I, sort I feel of... that way about even Nightmare. Just yeah. kind of like people just see your cases like, oh, well, Curtis has done more than you. It's like, actually, I've done more than Curtis at this point, but yeah. just, there's just no way to show timing, it. In terms of time investment as well, it's like, how do you show that yeah. you've done? And again, like what you said, I don't really well. care. It's just, I, it would be kind of nice. It would be nice. It, it would be more motivation, if nothing else. Yep. And then... Um, the other thing with my solos is that, to date, I've never seen a solo twisted bow. Wow. I've seen, I've seen a duo, two trios, a four and a five man, something like that. And the majority of my KC is solo. I've done like 800 solo CM, maybe like 900, out of like 1.2k. And I've done about just over 2,000 regular raids, of which about like 1.2, 1.3k are solo. Was the bow in your name in the teams? Yeah, the okay. majority. Okay, that's good, at least. I was going to say, that would suck if you're an Iron was, Man. <laughs> there was a period of time where I went... Uh, 180 regular try solo. I do one team raid, and we do raids, in LFR Standard, for fun. T by my name, 80% of the points in a trio. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That, ki that killed me for a while. I was just oh, like... Oh, God. It's, I've never been close to scamming anyone, not even then, but it's just like, ah, this is just, it's so undeserved, you know? Like, yep. That's kind of how I feel with, like... It's not even about the money anymore. It's like, can I just have my solo bow? Yeah, you go so dry. Like, that's how I feel at Nightmare. It's like, I go so dry in this. Like, I'm I'm terrified to do a team Nightmare. Like, I don't even do them because I just know the one team I do after being so many solos dry will be a mace in somebody else's name or, like, something... It's yeah, that's a that's a super motivation killer when it comes to doing solo raids. Yeah, they're still fun to do. I still do one every now and then, but it's not like there's no grind motivation because it's just like, are you any closer to a solo bow? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> and uh, again, it would, be, it would be really nice to see solo Casey tracked and stuff like that. Yeah, for real. So, and then we're left with the last, you know, the last sort of like motivational thing: speedrun times, which is sort of the last end game thing that you can really do, I suppose, when it comes to this kind of thing. For Chambers, I'm done. I, 
don't really have a team to do speedy cms with nor am i super motivated um i also i don't know there's, some, there's something about team cm that never really sparked for me but um at one point i had solo duo trio four plus one and overall wreck for chambers which was cool and it's not as impressive as it sounds considering that most of the records people didn't really go for so it wasn't really competitive in that sense yeah but it was fun to like complete the set for a while i suppose um inferno wise <laughs> which is the main thing i guess i'm doing now inferno speeds this is like a love-hate relationship because much much like my very first point that i talked about with regards to like evening rng and hitting max at times accuracy for everything you wouldn't think that something like inferno speedrunning has a massive amount of rng and yet we know for a fact that like zucks can range from about two minutes 30 seconds to like three minutes 30 seconds yep. complete rng and that that makes up two thirds of zucks roughly that's a whole minute and when you're going for sub 50s or even better, that whole minute is just like yep. complete randomness. And the same is true for every single major that you attack. You can four hit a major or you can 20 hit a major. And that's a huge amount of time lost if yeah. you're unlucky. Just reminds me of like this one time I was, I the the nightmare that I ha actually have recorded, I got a 14, 19. Um, mm -hmm. I kid you not, one pillar took like 20 harm hits. It just would not hit big. <laughs> And it's yeah. just the most irritating thing. You're just waiting for it to die, and there's nothing you can do. You're doing everything you possibly can, just can't die. It puts it puts you in a really weird place as well because some some runs you play amazingly, or you feel you play amazingly, and RNG isn't there. Yep. Some runs you play really badly, and the RNG is there, and I, I don't know how to feel about it because I would just love sometimes for the RNG to align with when I'm playing well, and it yep. does occasionally. It does occasionally. That's where the PPs happen, of course. Yeah. But our RNG really takes away from speedrunning, as it turns out, <laughs> when it comes to old school. It, yeah. It's like it, you you just have to sweat the game basically if you want to get an actual good PB. You just got to keep have, doing it. It's just you just have to keep yep. running nonstop. Yep. That's all you got to do. But um, I tell you what, though, Inferno speeds, out of all out of all the bits of content in the game, probably the most fun by far. Like even when it comes to mega scale stuff. That's less of that's less of like a personal holy crap I did this. That's a team thing, right? Yeah. When it comes to something like solo Tom, yeah, it's you know, you can go fast, you can play well, but it's not got that sort of adrenaline rush and also that fear of I suppose with solo Tom there is like a period of an hour where you or like forty minutes where you have to ticky carefully and play well. Maybe it's a similar ish feeling, but with more tick eating. But Inferno's like non stop action, that's really, yeah. really fun about it. You've got you've got so little time to think, and you've got to manage your HP. No set supplies, no restocking. Yep. So now it's definitely a, so much fun to watch. I bet everyone can like attest to that. Just watching anybody go for speed runs like competitively is just so much fun to watch. And I'm ex so excited for quest speed running because I know it's quest not P speed running. Yeah. I know it's not PVM, but it's a completely different thing. that's untouched where it's like it's. Dude, you're gonna find people are gonna find out ways. I'm like, you know what's crazy? Is um well, I don't know. It depends on the inventory you're given. It really depends on what they give you, because there's gonna be like presets for I, I yeah. wonder if you can manage your presets before you start the actual timer, you know? Like, like, like an LMS interface would be cool, yeah. Yeah, like just to juggle things around and I wonder if you can I wonder if you're gonna be given anything to work with. Like you can just go on the GE, get whatever you want, start your inventory, start your bank, go. I really am curious I would, what they're going to do. I would, I would hope so. But Quest I'm so excited either. for that. And I feel like it's going to... It, literally, it could become a new thing. Like if it, I've said this in a previous cast where it's like, dude, if, if there's somebody that's really into the game that hasn't you know, gotten their content out there and just doesn't stream or doesn't do YouTube, if you are into quest speedrunning and you feel like you're good enough at the game to like get good at that, you could literally build... You're, like you could build yourself off quest speedrunning. That's gonna be so big. I feel like, just endless. Like well, people love speedrunning. Speedrunning in twenty twenty blew up as well. Yeah. So many different games and categories have just been going wild. Yep. Like, and it's endless content. Tag, yeah, speedrunning as a tag in YouTube is just it's it's doing well. You know. 
That and that and uh, world record in the title helps a lot. I find. Yeah. World record speed run. You've got a winning. You've got a winning video there. If it's actually yeah. something good. No, it's just really cool, and then people can figure out how to like improve it slightly. They'll watch yours and find out improvements and do it. Yeah. I just think all it's gonna be so much little, fun. All the little skips and ideas that come in. Like, who's going to need, um. Slayer music when there's gonna be speed run quests out there. Just <laughs> literally, you watch him and you'll do. He'll do a quest in five minutes. You're like, fuck. Like, let me just memorize this and I'll just do this. You know. I I mean, in, in a sense, right? It, it it's not like it would not be a bad quest guide. You're still doing all the steps as long yeah. as you follow through. There probably will be RNG with like combat and stuff, but like, yeah, there's always gonna be RNG in RuneScape. You just gotta accept it. Most of it is knowing what you're doing in order and, yeah. and going through the combat is definitely a minor thing. That sounds... I'm excited. Well, I don't have any more topics. I don't know if you have there's any. A couple, there's a couple in the, the list that I have. I'll, I'll pin it for thing. I'll take a real quick bathroom break. Let's, let's speed run a few of those topics, as it were, if there's anything left. Let's Looks see. like a few. Let me see the pins real quick. But I'll, I'll take a very quick bathroom break. All right, let's do that. Alrighty. All right, I'm back. Yep, me too. Okay, let me see the pins. Okay, go ahead. Lead Let's us. Let's see. I'll, I'll pick the uh, one that we haven't done yet. <laughs> Granite chins, the G tax, Willy PV, speedrunning place in Old Speed Speedrunning in this place is not in old school. It's sort of just the lead on from. Please give us a please give us a sub to do it on, but also make it so that it's like max at times accuracy, but also make it so that it's like a set time thing or like a tournament world thing that doesn't last forever. This is it's still rough. <laughs> there's there's no winning thing there with with making that tournament world last forever. I wish there, I wish there was a nice way to go about solving that. They'd have to make it really good ping too, because the last time they had a tournament world, I. F just physically couldn't do six jads because the ping was just so awful. Yeah, it's bad. That's a, I mean that's that's the problem in itself is like, how do you make like so many servers have different issues. Five five hundreds have issues at times. Dude, the worlds right are now, so time, bad right now too. Just three 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 six five was amazing for ages, and then it suddenly has this like weird tick delay on certain actions. It's so bad. Yeah, it's... they need to fix that. <laughs> they even did a reset like. A week ago and it helped stuff for like two days and it's back to garbage well they, they were saying it was like an engine problem which i thought was incredibly odd because how would an engine call i don't know how it works but how would, how would an engine problem cause lag yeah, and more more importantly if it's the same engine running in all the servers why are not all the servers having the same lag i don't know <laughs> it's an odd one oh, i'd love to talk about the polling system and how much i hate it oh yeah Tell me. I I despise the polling system, and there is one big reason why. If, for example, Raids 3 comes out, and Raids 3 is talking about one major thing change in Room 1, I guarantee that 90% of the player base will not have tried Raids 3, and yet they can vote on this change. Why? And is that not a problem? It's bad bad how do you propose to fix it though delete polling system i think the polling system has really stifled old school in the last few years and it's got progressively worse because there's now a hive mind that just goes around voting things up and down as they see as they see fit um partially reddit problems uh for example so for example uh mod arcane's slayer thing right here 
I think on paper worked really well. It could have done with some minor changes, and the biggest problem with it was how it was presented with regards to the big picture and, and more importantly, in the polling system. What they should have done was poll the idea, then poll the subcategory separately. But they poll it all together, and it all fails together. And now we have this really amazing idea, which I still really back. Um, that was a great solution to tutorial skipping in particular. Just gone. Never to be seen again. True. And it's like... That happens a lot. Yeah. And, and, and again, with like the Raids 1 fixes and things, why are they polling Raids 1 fixes when 90% of the community does not do Raids 1 and never has touched it and can still vote on it? It makes no sense. And... Yeah, no, I, you got... I, I, you, I, I understand it's like a real world mirror system where I can vote for someone in to be elected for whatever it is and have nothing to do with it in the slightest beyond just choosing someone. But isn't that an awful way yeah. to like do things in a game when you actually have this option to, to choose? I, I don't know. I, I feel like the really key ideas that they bring out, as long as they pass internal review and maybe some feedback from a set group, I don't know, like the content creator disc, for example... It should just pass by default, and what should be voted on is the subcategories that go into it. I really and liked the um, player councils or something, where it's like they have players that are really dedicated toward the game, and they they have different sections of players yeah. like UIMs, Iron Men, just really a diverse group of like just this council basically, and yep. yeah, that one, would be amazing. One one overseeing community manager, four or five subsets of game category for like Iron Men, which is split into hardcore. What? Well, well, I guess Iron Men, like leader, split into hardcore, UIM, whatever. Yep. Um, they need account. a lot of that. Split. Yeah, it's it's just, I, I would love to see this sort of, this just general tree branch thing and like feedback coming up. So like, you know, whatever community it is has access to one or two people that they can talk to. If nothing else, like, I don't even Reddit can do it. They can just put up a thread, like, put your things here. We'll skim through the ideas. Anything that's really stupid just gets completely omitted immediately. Anything that's remotely close to like sensible gets put through. Secondary filter, th tertiary filter. Four or five good ideas a month come up to each group of community leaders, and they don't have to be people who work for Jagex. Just be people, people like us. Yep. Who talk about this stuff and and skim through the ideas and have some good thoughts. And ultimately, that gets pushed forwards, and it's and it's not our problem anymore. But now Jagex have this info that has been collected for them and is actually just genuine community feedback. Yep. And they wouldn't even need so to pay. To they wouldn't even need to pay for that. Not, not I'd, a cent. I do this for fun. Like, I love yeah. talking about the game. So, yeah. There's so many resources they could use. And, like, I think those player councils are huge. And I really, you know what I'm kind of hoping on? Um, I don't know. I, I really feel like those player councils are huge. Um, and I think with I, the clan system, even even being able to like, I don't know, like the whole clan system, I feel like there should e almost be like integrated in the game, these player councils where it's like people can actually have discussions in the game as well and like through Discord and other things. But like there really needs to be more of that. And because, because the thing is what I'm scared about getting rid of the polling system is that Jagex has all control now and they will just put anything that they see good and yeah. they can just put it in the game so that's what i'm kind of nervous of but again do i trust the community more than them this is this is sort of where it comes from it's like do i trust the community more than them currently no as indicated by polling stuff um not just the floor in the polling system in its own but the fact yeah. that again you can vote for content you've never done it just it baffles me like again it's a real world system that doesn't have a place in the game I know. yeah no and, and like there the thing is like there are things that you really don't need to do to pull like obviously changes to a piece of content you really should have experienced the content before you vote but like when they're polling we're gonna come out with <laughs> some busted thing but you've never tried it so you can't vote on it. it's like you really need to be able to vote on it's just it's very tough but i think those councils would solve most issues yeah it's, it's about implementing a different filter so yep. currently polls is like a direct filter from the community yep. you don't need that well you, you want a secondary filter one that takes the community ideas and passes it through a brain <laughs> so hopefully hopefully several people who've come together to like think these things through yeah and then submit that as feedback not just a poll that has to be followed by default i actually kind of liked it when they hit poll results i would rather not know what 
actually got voted on and rather have them have like genuine feedback they could sift through. That sounds silly because hiding poll results is like, oh, conspiracy, but the, the idea behind it was actually quite a good one, I think, yeah. initially. Giving Dragex that freedom to make the correct decision in, in times when it may not have been. I don't think there's been a huge amount of situations like that, but there's been a few. I'm curious, would you like a new skill? I'd have to see it before I, <laughs> before I, before I try to... The, the likes of warding just felt really awful yeah. i don't know how to explain it, nah, it it just looked like something where for max for, for like people who are essentially maxed it's like okay you just have to train this other skill yep it didn't really feel like a <laughs> real skill like literally everything that was in there could have been put into magic and crafting like yeah, enchanting was, clothes it, basically it was it was literally magical crafting yep they could have um, literally just moved it all into there and uh even room crafting as well like put it into those three skills just added little yeah. things, but yeah. I I haven't thought about new skills at all, really. I'd have to sit down and just draft up more concepts. I, I think, honestly, they could knock out like five different concepts for ideas based on real world stuff and just have people look at them and give some feedback again. Yep. No okay. voting, please. Just, you know, sort of. I have my own ideas. Like, and most of my ideas are kind of for, for actually reviving things that are already in the game that have zero use and are just trash. Like, because things that have come out in the game back in like 2002, 2003 that are still in the game that were balanced around that time where it's like, I feel like there should be some rebalancing and some uh, oh, yeah, older pieces of content. And I have so many ideas and I feel like they're pretty so, like, balanced. Speaking of rebalancing, smithing skill, right? Yeah. 99 smithing to craft rune plate body and like 80, 85 to craft a dragon plate body. What? Um, besides that like crazy fact, it's like, there, there is some great uses for rebalancing smithing and also incorporating or reworking the skill entirely. Um, you never want to get rid of it. You still keep the training methods the same, but in terms of like the upper level of the skill and rebalancing those tiers, what if you know you use smithing as a path to refine items? So you take items out of the game by refining them into better items. True. There's a lot of different a ways. A I'm AGS refinement rank 1 to 3 adds um, like 5 accuracy per. Requires smithing level. Yeah, no, uh, I'm I'm nervous of like a full rework, but I, you know what, a rework I really want to see that doesn't really mean anything to us high level people is like, you know how like rune scimitars is best, just best, like yeah. they've pulled on they've they've shown on Reddit a million times of rebalance these things to make battle axes and maces have a have a use for once, like I don't know. I think R that's R a real thing. Type that needs. thing where god swords are actually main attack weapons. It's not. I know it's an RS3 concept, but it's it, it's yeah. not like no. I mean, there's a lot of rebalancing. It's perfectly fine, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm a fan. It would skew our perceptions of like what's good for a while because we're used to it. But in terms of in terms of fixing stuff to make the the tier work, sure. Yeah, it's just a shame that like scimitars sure. are always best in every situation, basically. Yeah, where pretty, like, pretty much, pretty much yeah. every single one. Like, I think like long swords. Like, for example, dragon long sword is you just look like a fucking noob if you're wearing that thing because it's just slower and that makes it. It's it should be, it like it should still be worse DPS, but it should have a perk like way more accuracy or something. So it's like if you really need the accuracy for something, it's like at least it has some sort of niche where it's just kind of yeah, good somewhere yeah, maybe. I, I, I guess seeing a rework like that would not actually change the meta for anything in particular. Yeah, it would just give I mean, certain niches, I guess. I I don't know. Would you, would you rather see like some really big content updates for high level stuff next year? Or would you rather see like a really good rework? Personally, I, I, I personally, I'd, I'd actually yeah. rather see the rework. Me too. And I know I, people I, I, I are super into just getting raids, 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 raids. Like, give me my yeah. high level content. But at the same time, I really love the fixing and balancing issues it feels like a baseline to work off as well yeah because if, if they settle if they settle on like let's say uh i don't know like are there even any like level 80 85 attack weapons in the game uh, like, defenders, like 80 defense i think 80 is the highest let me just look actually i'm in the so, game so, so, so they have like levels remaining above that still Oh yeah, there's so many. And those aren't even it's still, it's still places to fit stuff. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like there's there is a lot of room, and at the same time, it's like people are like, oh, p things should be moved to level 85. Like I agree, there should be rebalancing, but at the same time, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Most people have 99 ranged or 99 strength, or you know, 
but it yeah, could it could there could be rebalancing to actually help because like a Tebow, for example, really should be like a level ninety five range yes. thing. Like, why not? <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't team? really make that big of a difference because most people are already ninety nine. But at the same time, it's like why not? You know, for balancing. Yeah, when it comes to regular accounts, who's going to try and limit their range specifically? When it comes to Iron Man, who's not going to be doing raids with ninety plus range in the first place? Yep. And who wouldn't grind those three levels if you got the Tebow? It's like. Things like that make sense to, to be at that range. Yeah. Well, maybe like 90, because you probably want to use it a bit lower. You could get it earlier. Yeah, who knows? Like, But, you know. Same, th that, same thing with like the Mace, the um, Rapier, and Blade of Sailor. They should be like 90, I feel like, each of them. Yeah. But again, I it's suppose, like... I suppose, yeah. I suppose you put those up there. You, you end up limiting what content can deliver stronger items you only level you only left with like 95 right yeah so it's kind of hard to unless, say but unless I, you want to start you but, can start slotting in like 93 92 i guess yeah. if you really can but and then again do we really want just objectively better items than sailed or rapier and stuff that are like those tier like i don't know it's I, like it gets to the point where I'm, it's like i'm a fan of items with different effects with different purposes true much more than Niches. like damage increase yeah but now you got to find places for those to be useful in I want them it's to like, nerf the like, Dragon Hunter Lance. <laughs> uh, I want them to nerf. I want them to nerf it so it's barely better, barely better. And I mean like 0. 0.1 DPS maybe better than a rapier. Like I just, I still want it to be best in slot, but it's just, it's to the point where it's too good. It's too good. It's, it's just best in slot to the sense that as an Iron Man, if you rush that, you have a stab weapon for Vasta. Best in slot for all minus scythe, which is not going to be useful on iron, really. Yeah. Never, unless you can yeah. afford to blood rune it. And you have crush for Tector. It's insanely strong for raids. It's a custom built raids weapon. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's a bit too strong. And it's so powerful against dragons. It's just to the point where it's like if you don't have that, don't kill dragons. I hate that. It's it's one of those things people rush nowadays on irons, right? Essentially. Yeah. And like, they as could... soon as you start your slayer grind, it's straight to ninety five. Yeah. And they could keep it, but it's it's like Arc Light being best in slot against demons. It's cool. I mean, it is a free weapon. There's the argument there that it's already free, but at least it's charged with something where it's like the lance is just this unlimited, crazy powerful against dragon weapon, and nothing will ever be better than it besides like a scythe in certain scenarios against like certain dragons. I don't know. I guess dragon on the crossbow is like comparable ish, but it doesn't have the damage output because it just hits the same number. Yeah. Even dragon under crossbow like should be nerfed. In my opinion <laughs> yeah you're probably you're probably right when it comes down to that it's just obnoxious it's such a weird arbitrary buff they that's, did to try to balance it too, around blowpipe too many dragons is the problem yeah no there are and dragons are most dragons are great money makers i don't know yeah i mean it's just a big dragon slaying killing game right yep. but you know, it's nice to see some sort of variation and consistency with something else so, like if they bring out I don't know, a giant worm. It'd be nice to see, like, tiers of giant worms that you could actually kill or something. I want to see them come out with desert tremors, like those uh, sand worms. From, the, from a... I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, I want those to be a... Ra Raids 3... Uh, Please. I want that to be the final boss, actually. So a bunch of these sandworms popping out of nowhere, slicing them. And I want it to be graphic. I want to see you actually chop off their heads. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they can do that. I mean, there's a decapitated head in TOB, right? And Elvarg. And, oh, yeah, you just fucking yank his head off. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I that's true. Know. There's, I don't know, there's so many options. Like, there's so there's so much potential for this game. Like, we have not seen anything. You know what would also be kind of cool? I was mm -hmm. thinking um, some, like, there's so many mechanics you could add to, like, high-level bosses. But one of the bosses was kind of like, uh, it I guess it would be sort of similar to Triple Jad's. Where something attacks, like some monster, some boss in the future will have this special attack where it consecutively shoots out like six different attacks all within one tick of each other. Good and, lord. And then it has like and then it has like a three tick delay to it. So you have to remember what it shoots out and you have to pray against it like correctly. I think there's like so many little things where it's just like super it's like you just have to be like really, really like so it's, in there, it's like you know. It's basically Satetsuk, then. In a team of five, it's just like five bouncing orbs that will come towards you, that kind of thing. Yeah, just, I don't know. There's Little so there's so many time. things I could do. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Man, Raids 3 better have some good ideas. And I'm so excited. It's it's going to be the best thing or the worst thing, right? Yep. <laughs> half, the, half the player base will... The, the, players, the player base will double in size or half will quit overnight. 
I think that's kind of probably what it's going to be like. Not entirely sure though. I'm a bit scared of the clients and plugins with regards for raids through. Yeah, now those have gotten kind of out of hand lately. If they're able to crack down on that and their own client and bring out raids through next year, they've got a winning combo though. Yeah, for sure. Because along with the uh, the developments they're doing for clans and stuff, it puts them in a really nice place to start working on all the uh, relevant stuff for PvP and PvM, competition-wise at least. Yep. We'll just have to see. Well, um... Shit, this is a long one. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. Yeah, this only, is... Uh, four hours? Yeah, this is a good one. This is lengthy, man. Um... I don't really have... I think we covered... Did we cover everything? And again, I need to ask you because, like, I'm looking over... We've been around the block. There's a couple of little things, but... We'll have to do another one in like a year and just <laughs> yeah, touch totally. on everything and see how the game's upgraded and stuff. That would be a really interesting follow-up actually is like this is sort of a talk about plans for the game in terms of like a year, a year and a half, right? Yeah. No, so in a, in a year and a half, it's like, so did you quit yet? Or what's going on? <laughs> that's how the, are you enjoying the updates? That's the thing. It's like, I, I'm I'm actually more excited for follow-ups rather than new guests. I know it sounds bad, but it's like the follow-ups are going to be great in like you know, give it a year. We're getting a lot of different uh, perspectives as well. Yeah. Now you've, had, you've had skillers, patenters. You got little old me. Iron mains. Get some PKs on Iron mains. I need All some. Rest... I need a UIM on here, and I need a PK on here. I'll get how get Hauke, please. I'd get, love he, to he, get Hauke on here. He can he can he can cover like four different topics at once. I'd love to get. Oh. <laughs> I love Hauke. He's a he's the man. He, he would make a very good guess. Yeah. But um, I think. We're pretty. We're on a good stopping point. Um, I want so listen, guys. Addy cons. Um, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube will be in the description as long as some of the links that I provided or that I uh, showed on the recording, I'll get those uh in the description. I'll, well, those that I'll matter, I guess. Toss you some cool videos and stuff. Yeah, all the talks. Um, be sure, guys. Uh, follow. Adicon on those and subscribe to his YouTube as well. He's, I mean, just wait for Raid Three. When Raid Three comes out, you're just, I don't know. If wait, it's if combat it's achievements anything, as well, for sure. Yep, combat achievements. Yeah. The main thing. Oh, this is this is to, not not to drag on too much, but the you're big good. thing with combat achievements is three Zuck tasks in one. Oh And yeah. this was like this was this was like the highlight, right? But um. There is one thing that I want to do with regards to three Zuck tasks, and it's not actually regular Inferno speedrunning. It's no pillar Inferno speedrunning. I did a, I did my first and only no pillar run like two days ago. First attempt completion. It's not that Damn. hard if you know what you're doing. And just the thought of speedrunning it is both incredibly, incredibly fun, but also the problem with it is that you're just going to die. Yeah. You're going to die so much. And getting tasks <laughs> is not fun. So... If you if you're able to get three in a row, I really think that speedrunning No Player Inferno will be a thing next year, and that's going to be something to look out for. That's going to be exciting. I'm so excited for just the speedrunning scene, just in general. Big steps every year. Well, um, uh, if there isn't anything else to add, uh, Adicon, it was a it was a pleasure, man. I was, was that a, was nice. Was of... Yeah, that was <laughs> nice hearing. Like honestly, something I haven't heard in just a while is like somebody that's really talented like you're really talented at the game and it's nice to hear a perspective from somebody that's like does something different like you know does inferno does the hundred man cm so many people were like i know a lot of people wanted to hear about that was a big question and the thread was just how did how was the feeling of completing that and it's cool to have you on so yeah it was a lot of fun yeah well thank you thank you for in inviting me of course yeah and we'll have to do uh, a follow-up in like a year or so yeah with all this this content's come out it's gonna be good all right well be sure to follow guys. Um, the next Save cast is going to come out next week, probably. I'm not going to tell you who's going to be on it yet, but uh, Hauke, Hauke. We'll see. Well, we'll you, see. I know you. I know you probably haven't arranged already, but yeah, <laughs> we'll get Hauke on eventually for sure. Um, but yeah, have a great day, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.